for the next half an hour. This on. Test, 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 test. Test mic one, two, 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 two. two. <laughs> Three, four, five, six. Hello everybody, good afternoon everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us here at the Creator Tech. Uh, at City Music 3.0, it's our first time that we organized this amazing collaboration with so many people. And uh, I would like to, on behalf of City Music, I would like to thank everyone for being here with us. That includes our partners, uh, as well as you guys over here. Yeah, it's a good start. I'm very excited today with, with uh, all the presence of everybody. And yeah, it's good, this camera angle, okay? Yeah? So it's mine. Okay. All right. So I'll be here. So um, uh, amazing, exciting programs lining up with you, uh, to, uh, with us uh, until uh, later today. So um, just a little bit of us before I invite the uh, presenter up to present amazing products with, uh, with us. Um, so we have Claudio Chalk, a cinematic film making with Sony, Sony Cinema Line Cinema Camera Series showcasing, featuring ILME FX3 and ILME FX30, presented by Claudio Chalk. And Claudio is a creative director at uh, Three Step Studio, a full service creative production. 
uh, Production House and Content Creation Agency and the co-founder of GATBC or JetBC, a boutique creative consultancy. Oh, he has experience in vir- uh, visual storytelling and content creation as well as involvement in video productions of different skills over the years have shaped his unique approach in bringing clients and brand stories to life. Now, Claudia is also passionate about knowledge, sharing and educating as a Sony Alpha professional and lead video production trainer for Sony Digital Workshop since 2018. Now, he has taught many expiring videographers everything from the basics of video to more in-depth topics such as editing, color grading and sound design. Okay, before I invite uh, Claudio, uh, all of you have signed, uh, also register your names, right? For those who have not, please do so because we have lucky draw. It's going to be uh, drawn tomorrow, later tomorrow. So please do. It has amazing prizes to give away and very attractive prizes. So not forgetting that. So without further delay, um, I would like to invite Mr. Claudio up and share his presentation. Thank you. Hello, hello. It's Claudio here. A slight technical issue. It might change then. Okay. okay, sorry. Let's do a quick change. Sorry about that. No worries. Stuff happens when we are live. <laughs> Nothing happens when we are not live. Says <laughs> what? Okay, can you hear me, guys? All good, all good. All right. So, uh, oh, the Sony Cinema Line cameras. Uh, maybe just a bit of background myself. Uh, so I've been using Sony for the past, uh, I don't know, seven, eight years. Uh, and uh, you have seen the growth of the Sony cameras and their ecosystem, right? And um, the past few years, what we've been seeing is the group of cinema line cameras. Right? It's going to be very, it's more of a sharing, and then some of you can ask me some questions here and there as well about the cinema line cameras. I have brought with me the alpha camera as well, right? So this is going to be a nice, like we address some of this elephant in the room. Why switch from the alpha line to the FX? Why? Why are we switching, right? So um, the case for production, right? Small larger uh, scale production houses, right? We'll show you some. Uh, that, you know, you may look at it, oh, maybe it's short of a bigger camera, but actually FX3 is pretty good, right? Uh, well, at entry level, we should see right here, uh, FX30, for entry level now. So we can talk briefly about some of the key features here, and then you can ask me some Q&A. All right, it's all good. Right, so just a brief background myself. This is me, uh, former lead for the content production studio at. So you've probably heard of Ogilvy before, advertising agency, right? Uh, studio. Companies that do creative stuff, huh? uh, as well as we are running raw now as well. So we uh, we expect. More of you as well. Uh, I've been working with Sony for the past uh, 
six, seven years already, uh, as well as I teach at SMU as well. So, but that's more on content creation for businesses. So slightly different, right? Not so much on filmmaking. And last but not least, I used to DJ. So that's why I love like, this audio stuff as well. Okay, so my team, right? Uh, some of the our latest reel from 2023. So you can see some of the things that we have shot. And there's a lot of things here that are shot with X3. FX6. All right, let's just take a look. Some of the works that uh, my team and I have been doing the past past year. So you see some brands that you recognize, right? Uh, like Shake Shack, you know, Xlad, Sony, as of course, right? So you see quite a number of things there. Uh, and some of these ads there were actually shot with the FX3, right? So it's all about um, the power of the cameras, as well as when you merge it together with things like lighting, the lenses that you use, right? And the beauty of it, post production, right? Uh, obviously, don't, don't wait to correct everything in post, lah, right? <laughs> Get it right on set. Lah. All right, so why shoot with the FX3? Now, this is a live uh, a BTS photo, uh, us with the FX3, obviously mounted to multiple things, right? It's rigged up, right? Uh, to Atomus, right? As well as the RS3 Pro, right? Because it's damn heavy, lah. we V mounted as well, right? So, this is how we set it up, right? But why shoot the FX3? And the, there are a couple of reasons, right? Firstly, right, uh, as you all know right now, as of last year with uh, a firmware update in the FX3, what has happened is um, initially people were thinking, hey, why get FX3? It's just like another alpha camera, right? Uh, so some changes to the interface as well as the codec that is being used, uh, the, the interface as well, you know, and the way it merges with the ecosystem, right? Uh, as of last year, um, July, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, or August, right? Um, the FX3 is now uh, Netflix certified, right? However, obviously, if you want to shoot in Netflix, you need to learn to shoot in this thing called Cine EI, right? So some of you have heard this term, oh, it's very scary. I'm going to talk briefly about it later, right? But um, it's not something that most content creators will use, right? It's more for larger scale productions when we should really shoot on Cine EI. Mm? Now, uh, I'm going to show you some examples here, right? Uh, this is a recent film, Dope Sick. It was shot much of films with um, the Venice, as well as you see some of the shots that are more handheld, as well as in certain locations where it's a bit tighter, right? Uh, low light as well, we actually shot, they actually shot this in with the FX3, right? So you just take a few seconds, right? Some of the shots you see, and then some of the drone shots as well were shot with the FX3. I know most people don't think about us up there in the mountains. Many of my patients are minors. It's right, so dangerous work, here. and Duck they carry the burden of building this nation on their backs. They're in pain. These people, my people, trusted me. I can't believe how many of them are dead now. All right, and I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to play the whole thing. Lah, eh? You can go and watch it yourself, lah, right? But the thing is, uh, a lot of it comes from uh, learning how to shoot in the log formats of the camera controlling your camera settings, right? And how much the sensor can push, right? Uh, so all the low light shots, right? Uh, shot on ISO 12,800, right? And it's clean, it's clean, it's clean, right? It's really clean. Now, another example, um, Get Away, this is a film uh, last year as well, a short film on, on uh, uh, YouTube, right? You can go and watch it, it's horrible. I'm gonna show the trailer now. Take a note, entirely shot on the FX3, right? Entirely shot on the FX3, huh? Music all on the same one, no? This is definitely <laughs> remote. Oh, yeah, it is. I have, like, zero bars. Movie night? Definitely. Desert Dwellers 
three. They came on vacation, but checking out will be a problem. Is that this place? It is isn't. Holy shit, it is. Doesn't just something about this feel a little off to you? That car out front? It's the same car in the movie. Gonna call that emergency number. Hello? Uh, yeah, hi. I'm in the uh, desert house and the power's off. It's Joe. Yeah, it's Joe. No way. Look, this is not a joke, okay? You need to take this seriously. There is something going after Joe. Where are the keys? Oh, no. Where's Lori? You don't watch enough scary movies. Oh, don't start. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, you can, you can go watch it yourself. Like. It's not very long, it's like a 20 minute film only. Right? Um, but the reason why they shot this on the FX3, you can see there's a lot of low light shots. And some shots actually, we did, they use practical lighting as opposed to your standard COBs and whatnot, right? So uh, using the FX3 allowed them to push their boundaries and get in certain tight spaces. Uh, and that's the reason why we, in Singapore as well, we've been using it a lot, right, on film sets. So some of the commercials that you see now uh, by production houses or even some of the content creators that are creating content, right, they have been moving to the FX3 for a few reasons, right? A recent ad that we did recently, this is shot for Wells, one of our clients, uh, in partnership with Aperture, right? So Aperture launched their new lights, right, and we decided to do something fun like, by collaborating the two brands, right? So you can see here, entirely shot on the FX3 again, uh, the BTS photo you saw earlier was on the FX3, right? Uh, so what does this mean, right? If you pair a really powerful small cinema camera like this with good lighting, right, you can achieve really nice cinematic shots. Obviously, some things here you realize is the mistiness, the cinematicness of this. So things like pro mist filters were being used as well, right? So let's just take a look, quick watch. Water is a symbol of transformation. And every drop of water is a story of life. It's the perfect traveler and the driving force of all nature. Like dancing, water does not resist. It flows. And when it travels, it becomes the path itself. It always brings me home to the one. Right. So you see here, right, we, we're shooting for wells, right? Um, uh, quite a well-known um, water purifier brand, right? So um, a lot of things here, you know, using lighting and merging with the FX3, right? So if you look at the behind the scenes shots, right? Here are some behind the scenes. I'm just going to talk over it. That's Dawn, my DP, right? Uh, with the FX3. So really, we wanted to push the boundaries of this uh, to show you that, you know, with the FX3, you can achieve really, really nice shots uh, with on-set production as well as post-production. Uh, so he's running. Obviously, you see the lights that's being used to achieve the, the look and that we wanted, um, him running in the tunnel, right? Oh, he's gonna fall already, yeah. <laughs> so you can see that, right? The whole, the whole thing about making sure that you push the boundaries of camera, all the night shots here, shot in 12,800, right? Everything, obviously we shot the two base ISOs because the workflow was largely CDEI. Yep, so keep it clean, right? Now, why do we love the FX3? Uh, so you have seen a lot of production examples, but not everybody is in production, right? Not everybody is about high-level or mid-scale production houses. We are not all creating ads, right? We're not all creating ads, right? So the first thing, obviously, it's brilliant for commercial work, right? Brilliant for commercial. You saw some examples there. This was shot before the FX3 um, was officially launched in Singapore. Uh, I had the pleasure of shooting it with Clement, one of my uh, DPs, right? Uh, and we wanted to go really small. So this was shot with like a four or five men team only, right? So one DP, that's all. And then this is uh, a short film, right? So you can see when it launched really at the very start, even before we pushed the boundaries and updated the firmware, uh, this is how it looked like. I was born with the love for dance. As a toddler, I enjoyed dancing for talent shows. So you recognize some of the locations I as well? I started learning ballet at four and picked up tap dancing at eight. 
When I turned 11, I joined a dance school near where I lived. Seeing the amazing dancers on stage made me want to be like them. Everything here is shot in S Log 3 and then color graded later. I will go for practice six times a week and enjoy every moment. Dance had become inseparable from my life. By the time I was 17, I had already won international awards. However, with changing priorities and less time to prepare for competitions, I had to make the decision to stop competing. That has not changed my love for dance. When I dance, I feel completely free. All my stress and worries are stripped away, and I don't notice time passing by. Now, I dedicate my time to sharing my love for dance with others every day. My name is Claudine Ku, and I am a dance teacher. Sony. Right, so this was the official launch film when we launched uh, the FX3 back in 2020, if I'm correct, end of 2020, right? Uh, and this was before, when it launched, right, the people say, hey, it's another FX, if it's another A7S3, but in a different body, right? I'm going to talk about it later, okay? So I'm going to address this later. Right, so you see very nice commercial work, right? That's like short outdoors. How about some indoor work, right? Indoor, so that's, okay, so just now you saw those, that, that previous video, uh, everything is practical lighting. There was no lighting involved at the Chinatown. Right? In the studio, we used the lights from the studio itself. Obviously, there's some reflectors and, and uh, screams all that, right, to make the light softer and all that. But you can see that uh, with a very small crew and using the camera itself, pushing it limits, you can actually achieve pretty good. And now, it's in this, how about we do it in a studio, right? Uh, so this is a recent ad, just shot like in April, I think, yeah? Uh, again, with the FX3. And I'm going to show the first maybe 20, 30 seconds of it, all right? Hello, creators. Ever wonder so what it feels like this guy? to be empowered? <laughs> it's having effective control of quality audio without any fuss. Thanks, Leonard, for having me. Cut. I think we got it. It's being able to record and express yourself effortlessly. It's having the power and speed of light. Yeah, I'm not going to show you the whole ad, but basically it's an ad about the ecosystem of Sony's uh, accessories. But what happens here, right, is the main thing is that you, what you see here is everything shot on FX3 again, but now in an indoor setting as opposed to an outdoor setting, right? So obviously a lot of lighting at play here, right? Um, now, most of you may not come from production, so what else is this good for, right? If you're a single man operator or you run in a very small team of content creators, right? Now this is where it's built, the part where it's built for adaptability comes in, right? Um, so if, if you want to see something like this, uh, shot with three FX trees, right? Uh, side by side in some sort of a, like this, uh, like live stream setting, uh, right? Uh, so because of uh, the codec, right, as well as the 4K recording, right? And now a lot of times brands or even clients want things that are shot in landscape as well as portrait, right? So how do you shoot it both ways, right? So we shoot it in a standard landscape format. So you see on the left here. So the top is really golden brown. And I think this is just perfect to be served right now. It looks really good. Thank you. Special guest for today. Are you up for the challenge? Yes, I'm up for it. You want to be a bit healthier, right? So don't put so much. The garlic is smelling really good now. So we have this crispy quinoa topping. It's a really versatile recipe. Mm. Right, so you see something that is very like made for YouTube, lah, right? Or for websites, right? Very corporate or very brand driven message, right? Uh, but obviously, when you shoot something with FX tree like this, right? What can you else can you do? You can easily cut it for another platform, right? So this is the one that was on TikTok, right? So can I get you to de-skin the chicken to remove the fat and after that cut the four pieces? Use 230 grams of our spice paste. So marinate it for uh, four hours. Add a bit more aromatic onions, ginger and garlic. Blend it into a very fine puree. 
some oil, about 100 ml. Heat the oil, start adding the aromatic. Fry this for about 3 to 5 minutes. When this paste starts to brown, add the chicken. Fry the chicken lightly, add half a litre to 1 litre water in, add our carrots. And this will go for about 20 minutes. This quinoa, I've cooked it with low sodium chicken broth. So I'll add 2 eggs here. You can use any kinds of cheese you want. Grab this well mixed. Add the cauliflower and peas because this cooks really fast. Season the curry, soy sauce, sugar, pepper, salt, pour the curry into the ramekins. Copy with the quinoa. So go into the oven, it's preheated already and it's 180 degrees. We're gonna do a lemon when you just one lemon, squeeze this in, olive oil, salt and pepper, mix it and drizzle this coffee. 30 minutes up, ramekins are done already. So this is our curry chicken pot pie. I hope you enjoy this. Right, so you see with one supposedly a cinema camera, right? But uh, shot on the same shoot itself, but the output is very different, right? One for more traditional YouTube sort of content, the other one for YouTube and uh, for TikTok and Reels, right? IG Reels today. Um, but the adaptability, right? We have three FX3 on set, right? So see the adaptability in using it for different purposes, right? Now, some other FX3 content, now this is all 9 by 16. So yes, the FX3 here was like this, mounted most of the time, right? Uh, and that's the reason why we love this over something like the alpha line, right? Because it's actually easier to balance. It's actually easier to balance because of the lack of the viewfinder, right? So it's a bit, a bit easier. So let's see some examples here, right? Uh, one of them, this was for one of our clients, Scoot, right? We went on the plane to Australia to uh, celebrate their giveaway last year. We want to thank you for your support over the last 10 years. We are giving away 10,000 free tickets on selected flights departing from Singapore. The lucky winner is... So a mix of vertical as well as portrait content. Can I see your hand? 14 and... Right, so you see here, uh, and all this rest, all this rest of the videos here were all shot mostly in portrait mode, right? Uh, so I'm not going to show everything, but I'm going to show you something recent, okay? Right. Last one. Perfect for mobility. Right now, this is targeted at your one man camera, camera operator, your one man content creator. Right? Uh, again, you can see the difference here. Um, how you're going to run with one man, right? Uh, and then use one shots, right? So, the purpose of this, right, because it's so small, lightweight, and easy to use. And if you get it out of the box, what's the first thing you see? Uh, it comes in this thing called flexible. Uh, ISO control mode, right? So you can lock in certain settings that because of the button operating on the alpha line, it's a bit different here, right? So let's take a look at some of these videos, right? Uh, this is last year with Fenty Beauty. So very event-centric. Please invite on stage William Empire star and face of Fenty Beauty, it's K. You being the first Asian face of Fancy Beauty. Can we get a big round of applause for that? For a Singaporean to be on that, like, I feel like this is for Singapore as well, not just for me. Yeah. Everyone wants to look good. They secretly want to look okay. good. Now you see, like, I'm not embarrassed. I'm actually confident in wearing it. Minimal and still just want to have good skin. Rihanna totally broke like the barrier of like including every race, gender, religion. And that's what I grew up with in Singapore. So it's such an honor to partner with someone like her that represents that and truly represents that as well. Right, so you see here, what do you see the difference in all the videos? From something that was very commercial, but very nicely color graded to something more run and gun. Right, run and gun start, shot in s tone. No color grading because the export needs to go out fast, right? We just pop, editor, same day, it comes out, or the, the next day. Uh, something more fun, recent, right? Uh, this is for our friends at Carlsberg, right? So one thing that's happened a couple of weeks ago was this, right? So again, both shot on the FX3, right? On the left, you can see this is for SnickerCon.
festival. Right, so you see here something that was shot. This is a same day edit, right? A same day edit for the event itself. Uh, two, yeah, two FX trees, one vertical and one portrait. So you can have a bit of flexibility with that, right? Say two of my videographers went to shoot it, right? And then they are able to um, get the footage, right? And then I was the editor for this, lah. So same day, this is edited in two hours, right? So you just have to be very quick. But the power of this camera here, the power of this camera, largely shot on S C tone again. Because we don't have the time to... Uh, oh no, this was not shot as in drone. This was shot in the bake-in LUTs. So you know you can actually put in LUTs into the cameras now and you can bake it into the footage. Something that is not available on the Alpha line, right, which I'm going to talk about. So baking in the footage, your, this is our own custom LUTs. That's why the colors are really skewed like this. So I don't really have to think about color grading so much in post. right? Another thing, same thing, this is something that's just happened, you all can see from the background, that's Gastro Beats now right now happening at uh, Marina Bay area. Uh, same thing, same day or next day, next morning edit, right? Uh, again, this is also baked in LUTs, right? So you can see it comes out and a bit more bloom. Uh, so Sydney bloom sort of look here. So something very quick just to, for the brand to shout out when they come, come down to Gastro Beats and you know, uh, take a selfie and get a free Carlsberg, right? <laughs> simple, right? So just a simple video that we did for Carlsberg as well. Uh, again, to cut down the editing time, what did we do? Right? Everything we shot in camera with built-in LUTs. So you don't have to think so much about uh, color grading in post or color correction. And the moment you set your white balance on set itself, because this way is very green, right? Carlsberg is super green, right? So you need to make sure that you get your color uh, white balance correct on set with the LUTs that you have built in. Okay, now, last thing, right? Uh, let's talk about the low light feature of this camera. So as we all know, right, uh, this camera pushes up to ISO 12,800. It's a dual ISO camera, right? So your first base ISO is 800, and then the second base ISO is 12,800, which means, right, at uh, layman terms, right, uh, at 12,800, your footage becomes clean again. So noiseless, right? So uh, that's the reason why this camera has been so popular for shoots where you don't have the ability to bring a lot of lighting or you're going run and gun style with very small lights, right? So sometimes you shoot in a light, you just want to have create a certain look which is not so um, bright and, and uh, overexposed, right? So how do you go about it? Shoot at 12,800. The footage on the FX3 uh, can go up to ISO 20,000 and is usable. 20,000, right? So that's why I loved it. Like I always bring it when I go traveling or whatnot uh, because it's small camera. And to be honest, taking photos at 12 megapixel is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. All right. So let's just take a look at this entirely shot at 12,800. So this was the official video for uh, Nightfest last year, right? So if content creators, you know, if you're thinking about FX3 in low light, it's, it's good to go, lah. It's really good to go, lah, right? Uh, now, now, let's address the elephant in the room, right? I have with me two cameras in front of me, you can see, right? A7S3 and the flagship Alpha 1, the A1, right? Both term now as your hybrid cameras. Right, this can shoot 8K, uh, but you need to be cool, lah, huh? cannot be too warm, right? Uh, 8K, because if we're talking about a body that is pretty small, right, to shoot 8K, 
uh, and then the original A7S3, right? This was launched in 2020, right? And then the uh, what do you call it? FX3 came out about a year later in 2021, right? So I had the privilege of playing with this before it launched. At that point of time, I was pretty mind blown, right? Because, right, we were thinking, okay, this camera is, is it. The S line, the sensitivity line is going to be the cameras for all videographers, right? Uh, but one thing I think that as we started to want to push the boundaries of a small camera, right, we wanted to push it to doing even greater work, to shooting even more commercial work, especially in Singapore where it's pretty warm, right? We realized that, you know, there's another alternative body here that for our work that we needed, right? Um, so on the left, you can see very simple breakdown of the differences, right? What's the pros, what's the cons, right? Uh, S3, you know, there's a high-res EVF, right? Familiar to your Alpha 7 series users, you know, you don't have to think so much. If you came from the A7 III and all that, you can just use this, right? Uh, more hybrid focus, right? Because you have the viewfinder, right? Then the cons, you know, some of the things that is missing, right? Like your XLR adapter, you want to put in your own mics, right? As compared to this, if you look here at the FX3, right, uh, this is the nice handlebar, but the handlebar is actually a field recorder as well. Right, there's actually a similar field recorder for the A7S3, right, but there's only a single point of mounting, which is the hot shoe. Uh, so, kind of scary sometimes when I use it, lah. really, really, to be honest. <laughs> it's kind of scary when I use it. So, this one, not as scary because you screw in the stuff, right? You have mounting points, right? So I'm going to talk about this briefly later, um, as well as the ability to balance, right? On, on really compact sort of settings. I'm going to talk about this later. That's why I have with me the brand new Crane uh, M3S by Zuyin, right? So you can see here how this actually works for really run and gun stuff. The reason why I brought this out is because later my guys are going out for a shoot, lah, run and gun shoot tonight, right? So they're going to use the FX3s with uh, the Crane M3 and the Crane M3S, right? So the first thing is the overall ergonomics and build of the, the camera, right? Um, one thing that you realize when you actually have a chance later to come down and look at the cameras, right? Uh, those of y'all who are in the studio here, uh, slightly deeper grip for your hands as compared to your standard alpha cameras. Can, can you all really see? I don't know, maybe the top-down camera can see. <laughs> yeah, right, so you can just see slightly deeper um, deeper sort of grip, right, slightly. So you can actually enable you, right, to put it in just slightly more. Yeah. Oh, oops. You need to see, oh, okay, okay. Can see? Maybe I need to move the mic a bit, huh? Can? Yeah. Just very slight, lah. Okay, but actually it's more in the body here because the grip here allows you to hold it much, much. Uh, nicer, like. and it's because it's longer the body now. So, you know, last time when you go to the alpha cameras, right, your last finger is like at the bottom going to hold out, right? So now you can really grip it fully like this, right? Really fully like this. So it's a bit nicer, like. it's a bit nicer, right? Uh, second thing is the build of the camera, yeah, the build of the camera. So the build of the camera here, right now, we have a different uh, material that's being used to build the FX3, more in line with your uh, FX6. Can okay, switch back? So more in line with the FX6 here, right? Uh, and same material that's been used for this, right? So you can see that it actually works much, much better, right? As well as all the mounting points, okay? Now, the second thing, easy to rig, right? So with this camera here, what do you need? If you want to rig things up, cage. Okay, I, I, I know I'm production, lah, but I hate cages. Lah. I really hate cages. Add so much bulk to your camera, right? Run and gun stuff, please do not put cages. Right, don't need to wire onto the client, right? Or you know, make yourself ah, put this cage, put that thing, then make it look like a bloody big camera. You know, go small, right? Go small and save your back for the future, right? Don't hold such big cameras, right? So this one has all your mounting points, right? So you have like multiple mounting points on the camera. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five around the body, right? Uh, all your quarter-inch mount traits, and this allows you to. Uh, easily mounting. So what do I usually mount it to? Right? In this case, right, let's say I have a bare one without the um, uh, what do you call it? Without any handlebar attached. So maybe I'll mount a 
simple small amount for me to slot in a road mic or a DJI mic, you know, or any wireless mic system that I want to use to do an interview right here. And then maybe I mount a small light here. Right, simple stuff that can make the, the whole thing look a bit nicer. Right, easy to read. So you can see here as well, because of its compact size, right, you see the what Clement or my DB here, or that he easily slotted into the RS2 at that time. Right? And actually it balanced. Uh. I don't know how we, we balance, uh, but it balanced well on this. Uh, right? Active cooling. Right? So this is the elephant in the room just now we spoke about, right? Uh, the S3 and the Alpha series uh, is built for hybrid, uh, right? So if you're gonna shoot in certain situations, right, where it's a bit more warm, right, or you're gonna shoot everything 4K 100 frames per second. Uh, then this, this really comes into, into play quite well because of the two things. There's a vent, right? So maybe if you just look at the top-down camera here, right? What you can see here is there's actually uh, two vents around the, the Alpha system. One here, you can see here, there's a vent here, yeah? And another vent at the side, right? So what does this do? It takes in the air to cool the system down and blows out the hot air, right? So allows you to shoot in areas where it's really slightly warm and you can keep going, right? Now, the cause of concern is, what happens if, uh, is the fan loud, right? Is the fan loud, right? So there are two things here. If you are going to record forward your audio most of the time with whatever mic you use, the sound from the fan is actually not, uh, it's actually quite negligible, right? The second thing is, if you are uh, going to, if you want to turn off the fan for whatever reason, you can actually go into settings and do it. Right, so these two vents here, one at the bottom here and one at the side. Second thing, uh, yeah, we can switch back. Yeah, so second thing here is, uh, is it weather sealed now? Right, because it's got holes, right? Uh, it's not fully weather sealed, but I brought this to a, like a more deserty area. I brought this to Las Vegas last year, right? Uh, the Nevada Desert. It was perfectly fine, lah, perfectly fine. But obviously, uh, I don't go around like, just holding it like this, lah, right? <laughs> Let the dust come in, lah, right? I did put a small like, wrap, you know, those clean wrap thing. Right? As I, shoot, I, turn off, I turn on the fan for a while in situations where it was not so dusty. Right? If not, I put a small wrap. And then at the bottom, I cut a small hole so that you reduce the amount of dust that goes in the camera. But pretty nice footage that was shot there as well lah, with, this, with this FX3. Yeah, so the active cooling is something that really changed the game, especially in, in hot, hot, humid Singapore. The powerful handlebar, which I really spoke about earlier, right? Uh, it's actually a XLR K3M, which is the handlebar that's made for the Alpha line of cameras that's adapted for this. It has three input channels, right? So if you see, if you look at here, uh, maybe you can switch the camera again, the top-down camera, right? What you see here is two XLR inputs, right? Two XLR inputs to mount your mics in. Right? Uh, as well as here, it's for you to put your whatever mic you want to use. Right? So uh, if, if you want to use Sony mics, uh, obviously good, right? but if you don't want to use Sony mics, whatever you want to use, whatever brand you want to use, perfectly fine. All you have to do is mount it there and you can use it ready. Now this handlebar, Yes, correct. So some of the people, like one of the audience here, just said, oh, some of the mics, right? Like your Sennheisers and whatnot, maybe your Rhodes as well, right? Uh, too small for the hole, right? So what do you do? You know, your, your, you can just put your, you know, those gaff tape or, you know, your bicycle, you know, those rubber things, right? The rubber placements, right? You can just put it here and you can mount whatever mic you want, right? So I've seen people mount your NDGs, you know, your uh, uh, MKH mics as well from Sennheiser and whatnot, whatever. Yeah. But sometimes we don't even mind here. This is just for you to pass through the XL cable because you know what you're going to do? Do, do, boom, right? Interviews, right? Uh, now, what's the purpose of this? Right, it's 24-bit digital audio. Right. Secondly, right, you don't have to worry about syncing audio in post. Right. There, if you're not doing time code stuff, you're not doing big productions right, as, as content creators or small production houses. Right. So everything goes in, you don't have to worry. Now, this thing, right, the most extreme that I've seen someone do it before right, is to put six mic inputs into this. Six channels. Uh, not is it six channels, uh, six people talking on the talk show. Why? Right, so two XLRs here, right? Uh, we can switch to the front. Yeah. Two XLRs here, right? Uh, what happens here is two XLRs, and then there's actually one more small one here, right? There is this uh, 3.5 mm input, right? So what, what did the person do? They put two road wireless go into here, input one, two into here, input two, and then two more into input three, right? So essentially, obviously, it's not separate channels altogether. 
you can host a talk show of six people just talking and you don't need to go back and do post syncing. Right, so that's the perks of this handlebar. Lah. Yeah? Okay, next, uh, back to the slides, guys. Yeah. Right, uh, power zoom. I, I'm not going to be able to show this fully right, because I don't have my camera plugged into the, the screen itself. But essentially, if you look at your camera, maybe switch again to this top down, sorry. Uh, here on the on off button, which you're very used to on your alpha cameras here, right? This is the on off button here, right? So turn it on and off. Uh, in your, to bring it in line with the other cinema line cameras, your FX3 and FX30, your on off button is actually here. Right? It's to turn it on and off here. Right? So let me just put the screen so you turn it on and off here. Right? Turn it on, turn it off here. So what happens to that top? Right? This becomes a power zoom button. Right? So from white to tally. Right? White to tally. Now, if you have with me like this lens here, which is the power zoom lens, the 1635G, right? uh, you can do easy, nice power zoom movements. And you can control the speed of the zoom as well as uh, the, the doing recording in, as well as in standby. Right? So this is the power of this lens. Now, if you're coming from lenses like your other lenses, like your primes, and your G Masters and whatnot, right? That's really fixed in stone. There's, the zoom is there, like 2470, right? So how do you then use this feature? Like you can turn on this thing called clear image zoom on your Sony cameras, right? It allows you to do a 1.5, some sort of digital AI, la. I'm not gonna explain too much, but basically it tries and take in the information and fill in the pixels. So your 4K is still sharp. It's not a stretching out of the image, right? So this is something pretty useful for you. If you're a keen on, you know, using these power zoom features. I actually use it quite a lot nowadays. Huh? Now, before I end off, right, um, you know, last year, this is what changed the camera and set this apart. So you have with me here, you know, the S3 and then the FX3 and FX30, which was launched. Uh, last year in July, they changed the firmware update, right? The interface changed and they bring in a lot of new features, right? So ZY was one of our alpha professionals in Malaysia. He did a very simple video, and I want you all to just take a look at this. Uh, why is it still for content creators, and why has it become a go-to for production houses who want to go run and gun stuff? Rolling and market. Whether you use your FX3 this way, or this way, this latest version 2 firmware changes the way you work with this camera. And in a good way, of course. It's a firmware update so powerful that FX3 feels like a completely new camera now, especially with pro features like Cine EI. If you have not experienced a Cine EI workflow before, there's a chance you might find this mode on the camera to be a bit of a mystery. It's more commonly used on high-end cinema workflows, but the idea of Cine EI is by always shooting at the camera's base ISO and controlling noise levels, it lets you take those 15 amazing stops of dynamic range on your FX3 and shift it towards where you need it most. If a scene has highlights that are particularly hot, you can expose it as an EI that's got more room for highlights. The way you tell is by that number behind every EI value. That number is how many stops you've got for your bright bits. And if a dark look is what you're after, choose an EI that prioritizes shadows over highlights and you'll get a clean, noise-free image. The fact that the FX3 has two base ISOs makes the Cine EI workflow extremely flexible to help you capture the best image possible. The FX3 also gains compatibility for timecode syncing thanks to this adapter cable that plugs right into the FX3's USB port. With this, you can now sync the FX3's internal timecode to an external source, which saves you time in post when using this for multicam productions. It's really the pro features like these that fit the FX3 right in when used alongside cameras like the FX6, FX9, or even Venice. In fact, you'll now even find the FX3 on the list of Netflix-approved cameras. Yet, if some of these features features sound too overwhelming, please don't sell your camera yet. You can still use it the same way you did, just with even more features at your disposal, like the ability to load your very own LUTs into the camera. When shooting in S-Log, you've now got the freedom to monitor your picture using a custom LUTs that you imported. But for those insanely tight deadlines when you just can't be bothered to tinker with log footage, and I'm looking at you same day edits, the Reborn FX3 does give you the option to bake your LUTs right into your recorded footage, behaving essentially like picture profiles. The Flexi ISO mode is also right 
stuck there for times when you want to shoot S-Log but without adopting the Cine EI workflow, just like old times with picture profiles 8 and 9. And in this firmware, even the display's been thoughtfully tweaked, so none of the info text obstructs your picture. Once you move on to post, you can also now stabilize your footage directly inside Premiere Pro using the new Catalyst Prepare plugin. So sure, the FX3 we thought we knew is behaving a little differently now, but I like to think of it as a side effect of supercharging an already great piece of hardware. Whatever it was you were doing with this, it only gets better now. Sony. Okay, so, you know, very brief, right? Perfect uh, overview, right? So I'm going to close off the session with this, this thing, right? Codec options have changed right now. The firmware 3.0, you can now shoot DCI 4K on the FX3. So true 4K, no more your UHD 4K, right? So slightly wider, huh? slightly wider, right? So you got more information, right? Uh, don't know what's next. Maybe Sony will give us open gate, hopefully, fingers crossed, right? Uh, that's that, right? Better, more codec options. I won't say this, like, this are all your codec. You can go and Google this online and you can find it there. But basically now there's DCI 4K, yep. MLUTs, you saw just now, right? Inputting your own MLUTs. What is this super useful for? Wedding videographers, right? Event videographers, right? Perfect. Same day edits, right? Or next day edits, or maybe you have a three day turnaround, right? The first day you go back, put your footage. Second day you edit, third day you just send off and finish it, right? You don't need to think about color grading so much. Obviously, you still need to tweak some things, like, you know, reduce your shadows, your highlights, maybe reduce some warmth, you know, uh, increase the blue. Basically, helps you, right? Bake it in. You can also bake it in, not into the footage, but just into the monitor itself. Meaning that you still shoot s lock. You see how it looks like, how your Atomos monitors work, right? Or any of your third-party monitors, right? See the footage as, uh, in, in whatever LUT you have inputted it, but when you bring back to edit in whatever firmware, uh, whatever software that you use, it's still back into s lock tree. Only on Premiere, Premiere Pro right now, you have the Sony plugin, which would then allow you to see the metadata of the codec that you shot in. Right? So with anything, that's what they'll do, right? Okay, so I'm going to end off here um, with a Q&A session if you have any questions, right? If not, I'm going to be around here for another hour or so, right? You can come here, take a look at the cameras, ask me some questions, uh, and uh, have a bit of hands-on to see the other FX line. We have the FX6 here, we have the FX3 and the FX30. 
Uh, FX9 is out on shoot today, sorry, at, as well as at Broadcast Asia. <laughs> so it's not here with us today. But here you can see, and let me know if you have any questions. All right. So thank you so much. I hope you all had fun learning about the FX3 and FX30, and see you all soon. All right. Thank you. Hey. You want to take a look at the camera? <laughs>
No sound? No sound? Please. It says, paging for Mike, my uni. Paging for Mike, my uni. No. <laughs> no, no. 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 Mike, Mike, my uni. To the production counter, Mike, my uni. To the production counter. Interesting. No. Okay, no worry. Take your time, take your time, no problem. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, or, uh, Jeff, go toilet. Okay. So, sharing one mic, is it? Sharing one mic.
So front this is more back, right? Uh. But at most, I also got front and back, mark. Oh. So front back is four. Top with front back is four. Okay. Uh, four plus four. So the mics are supposed to translate in that sense. Four for normal, four for upper. Beyond the ambisonic one. Yeah. How do you define that? Yeah. Because usually for, for logic is all yeah, that's a plug in. Uh. Yes, you, you need the MOS plug in. So with this MOS plug in, you mount to the thing. And then in which you have this one. So if it's left channel, I will purposely push all the way left and try oh. also and forward. Uh. If it's high, then I raise it to the top. I see. To simulate the top. Yeah. Uh. So you use the bit first, uh, right? I think so. It should be the correct way. Uh. Then when, when the thing sounds, when the sound comes through, right? Yeah. You only really see the dots, ah. You see up here, and you all stay in the same place. It's not moving, moving, moving. Right. So that's uh. where the object is, and then you, you know where exactly the sound will travel. Right. So then after, importantly, is because of this monitoring renderer, this is actually a binaural renderer. Right. So the binaural renderer is to wrap all this and give you the two channel, so that you yeah. can hear on your headphones. Oh. Uh. Because we don't have a 5.14 anywhere. Yeah. The headphones is the best way to actually yeah. hear it. Simplest way to stand yeah. that. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So this is what I'm trying to show people. Oh. Very cool. Uh. Uh, save battery first. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. 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 Before and then I think we can wait. Okay. We, we can start already. Uh. You know when you are ready, Jen. This, this might want to. Edwin, you okay? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Cine Music 3.0 uh, and the Creator Tag Showcase. Uh, this is our first time organizing this amazing uh, collaboration with so many amazing people around. Thank you so much once again, everybody. And also for the, uh, the partners that are making it all possible. Just to read out a little bit of... Uh, uh, partners uh, that we're working with. Uh, we have Audio-Technica, Mackie, Samsung, Zoom, Sure, Dolby Atmos, uh, Solid State Logic, Zhi Yin, NOC, Philips, Invicta, Sony, ECAF, Hinomi, Amaran by Aperture, Black Magic Design, and also our creative partners, Creatives at Work, and Alta Productions. Okay, so once again, thank you very much. And uh, okay, we have the next uh, presentation that will be by Mr. Jeffrey Lowe from Dolby. Now, Jeffrey is an instrumental in driving the adoption of Dolby technologies 
with content creators by developing a robust content production ecosystem in SEA and ANZ with the ultimate aim of delivering spectacular consumer experiences from as early as the design stage to the commissioning stage Jeffrey enables production studios equipped with Adobe technologies while fostering close relationships with existing content studios growing the number of content titles showcasing in Adobe with over 20 years of experience this is basically how old I know how much we know each other more than 20 years actually Jeffrey comes from a production background that's how I know him uh, in audio where he had worked with a Passionately, yes, of course, we know him as a passionate sound engineer on numerous television show, shows, music releases, and live concerts. Now, Jeffrey has also been an educator in the audio technology industry. We've also Edwin Lim, from, uh, he's, he's an account manager at Audio Technical. We'll be joining him later part of the presentation. So, without further ado, I would like to invite Jeffrey Lowe again on stage. Thank you very much. Take it away. Okay, can check check. Okay, so you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, so thanks for that long introduction. So I didn't mean for him to read it actually. Uh, and uh, that's my. I just went. We're just too friendly, right? Yeah. And that's really because I spent a lot of money here too in the past. <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, and actually a lot of my audio education. And quite some of it is actually here when I come and then I don't know anything, then I ask Mike and then Mike would always help me, tell me what the best is and best things to do. So <clears throat> I'm very happy to come here and share to you about Adobe Atmos. It seems like it's kind of a key, cool word to speak of right now. And I'm hoping that I can come and share with you what Adobe Atmos is about. Uh, there are many facets of what Adobe Atmos is. It ranges from everything from cinema, all the way to Apple Music to even gaming. Uh, and um, in the future, there may be Adobe Atmos Live also. So I'm just happy here to share. Uh, if you, I have tailored this to kind of talk about music, Apple Music and Adobe Atmos Music, because uh, this is City Music. So I, I guess that's the connection. Uh, but if anybody here has other questions about other aspects of Adobe Atmos, even cinema, I can answer some of the questions. So please. Uh, let's mix this casual and just shoot me and uh, I, I can see some of my good friends here also. Hi James. Um, and <clears throat> I will talk about, I will end off talking about live production, especially in sports and stuff. Uh, just to, and, and that is really to pave the way to kind of showcase an immersive mic that uh, Audio Technica has, uh, has come up with. And I worked with Audio Technica to actually use it in some events here. So uh, just to kind of connect the story to immersive production for live events. Fair enough? Okay. Okay, so let's start with, we will talk about what, uh, how to create that. Uh, I'm quite sure you all, uh, who's anybody who wants to create this will be interested how a studio is built and then the must uh, how to deliver the master and the delivery and stuff and uh, very much and of course like I said just put up your hand and give me uh, a question or something so I can target this talk as much to your interest as possible yeah okay okay so at the end of the day Adobe Atmos is just an immersive format right immersive means 3D, that's all, right? And there are special characteristics about this format that I would love to explain to you. And it really, in my opinion, changed the way we look at things, uh, look at audio or deliver audio uh, for the last 50 years, so to speak. So very simply, there are three things, right? And the first thing is, it is a format that is immersive. That means um, any, any format that you have known with, I assume most of the people in the crowd are audio engineers or are, are playing with audio toys. You know, I did that my whole life until today. So you all will know what's left, right, stereo and stuff, right? Okay, you all know what's 5.1? So that's left, center, right, and left, surround, right, surround, right. Okay, so 
Then obviously you have bigger formats called 7.1, correct? So if you look at all these formats, right, the thing is we were mixing music or positioning audio where the speaker position is. Right, so with stereo 5.1, 7.1, can you position sound on the top? No, right, because there's no speaker position on the top, right? And could you, you could do front, you could do left, right, you could do rear, right? Uh, so there was no immersive format that we could, um, yeah, no, I hear feedback. So being somebody who does sound, right, then I get very panicky. Sorry about my yeah, oversensitiveness to this, right? So, so what happened is there's no way to position sound on top. And the, and how we do it, like in stereo 5171, you name it, right? In any of your door that you use, meaning digital audio workstation, there was no way to do it. How would you want to put the sound on your, over your head or move it over your head? There was no way to do it. So Dolby Atmos is the first format or one of the first format that allows you to do it that in the format itself, there is high information in the sound, right? So it allows you to produce immersive audio content, right? Secondly, and this is the most interesting part, it's, it's a adaptable and scalable kind of format. So like we mentioned, stereo 5.1 and 7.1, right? We were mixing to speaker position. So I put two speakers in front of you. We were saying, okay, let's move it a little bit to the left. Let's move it a little bit to the right. Let's um, <coughs> put it behind if you had surround. But we were looking at speaker position. So a lot of times you think, oh, what to do? Huh? There's no speaker there. So shall we put somewhere in the middle and then we have stereo and phantom image, right? You understand phantom image? And then you all know this concept, phantom image? Yeah. Oh, so if you put the same sound on the left speaker and the right speaker, right? Where do you hear the sound? Center, right? But is there a speaker there? No. So why the sound is in the center? It shouldn't be, right? Yeah, because your brain creates that illusion. Huh? So that's what we call a phantom image because there's no speaker there. So we were trying to move sound in that position, uh, trying to fulfill our creative intent. But we can't because we were limited to the position of the sound. And if there were two speakers behind, we like, no, but I want more speakers behind because I, in, in my show, in my music, I want to put more stuff behind. You couldn't because you only given two, two speakers or in mixing, we call it two channels or two buses, right? Either you bus it to the left or the right, or you have a pen port trying to find 40% left, 60% right, right? So with Dolby and Mouse, right? Dolby said, well, it will never change. They have 5.1 and they want 7.1, and then there's 9.1, and in Japan, they have 22.2. .2. So it's all channel based. So what happened is in Dolby and Mouse, we said to the creatives and we said, hey, why don't you, you don't worry where the speaker is, you just think about where you want to position the sound, right? You say, okay, I want it top left. I want it exactly at this spotlight. Okay, just think about that. Don't think about where you want to position the sound. And what we do is we actually uh, have, we take the sound. Is The sound is a typical digital file, which is a wave file. And we put three-dimensional coordinates in it. So we don't tell it to go to a left bus or the right bus. We just say, here's the sound, here's the three-dimensional coordinate. Right? And we store that in a file. And that file is called Adobe Atmos file. And then from there, what we do is, this is where all the Adobe magic happens, right? So from there, what we do is, we send that file to a playback device. And in that playback device, right, there will be a handshake. That means when it goes to the playback device, it will say, okay, what kind of playback device are you? Are you a stereo device? Are you a pair of headphones? Are you a full surround sound system? And then what we do is we take that coordinate and find the closest speaker to the position you want it. So, oh, lucky, there's a speaker there. The Adobe Atmos technology will send the speaker there. But, I uh, know, not send the speaker there, send the audio there, right? To give your creative intent. And if there is no speaker there, what should we do? The Adobe Atmos technology will render, uh, that's the new term that we call it, we will render a virtualization so that the sound will be perceived there. Right? 
how effective the rendering depends how many speakers you have. Like if you really have the speaker in that position, great, we just send the sound there. If not, then maybe we try to triangulate and have three surrounding speakers try to create a phantom image there. Right? If don't have, then can't be helped. Let's say you can technically play back Dolby Atmos on a pair of stereo speakers. But if the stereo speaker has to virtualize sound behind, uh, can you do that? Actually, the answer is yes, but it's very limited. It, it won't, there won't be much positional accuracy, but it would still be able to virtualize some kind of sound behind. Right? And technically, you can also put it on a headphone. So everybody think, oh, a headphone is stereo, right? How are you going to hear 3D? Correct or not? Yeah, but if you think about it, right, if all these panels were speakers and, and, and I put hundreds of speakers around you, right, <clears throat> how many pairs of ears do you have to hear it? One, right? There's only your left ear and right ear. How many speakers I can put for you is still your left ear and right ear, right? So technically or theoretically, theoretically speaking, you could virtualize the sound to your eardrum and and sort of give the impression that the person is hearing 3D. That means I can, I, can, I can kind of cheat you to think or hear in 3D if you close your eyes. Would you agree with me? So, so this is what binaural is about. Like if we can process the sound exactly to how it hits your eardrum from the back, from the front, from the high, we can technically, technically virtualize it for you or make you think in 3D or hear in 3D. Right. Obviously, the concept is there. Making it happen is another level. Right, but this is what we are striving to is binaural. So that's why we are. Uh, that's why Apple is actually sort of uh, having this spatial audio and using their AirPods so that you can hear and experience kind of three dimension in on a set of headphones. So it's it's about like creating the impression. So you're all audio engineers, right? So it's very simple. Like if the sound comes from my left. What will you do? It will hit my left eardrum first before it hits my right eardrum, right? Because it hits your left eardrum first by theory of Hart's effect, you will perceive the sound coming from the left. But if I slow that sound down and I make the right side faster, your brain will tell you it's from the right. So these are all the processing we did and all these are built in the whole rendering of the Dolby Atmos technology. So this is kind of how we do it. And it will try its best to deliver a full immersive experience from headphones to laptops to up the way to cinemas to even sound bars or whatever systems you have to play back. Okay, so this is the revolutionary difference in Dolby Atmos. Because it is not fixed to a particular channel-based format, it is actually open, is adaptable, and most importantly, scalable to the future. That means if I would have like Fires down the road, I can't give the same talk, but that time there's a 12.1.8 surround sound system. It will still play it back. If you had did it in 5.1, you can't do that, right? You're stuck. I only have 5.1. How am I going to play back at 12.1? Oh no, I need to go back to a mixing studio and relook at my tracks and see where the speaker position are and start positioning. You don't have to doing Dolby Atmos. And because of these particular characteristics, uh, Dolby Atmos is used very widely. Um, did someone have a question? Or that? Oh, uh, it's used very widely across uh, streamers from the cinema to home streaming to even uh, headphones and stuff. And they use this format to deliver the best, like um, most spectacular immersive experience you can find uh, from any content that you wish to enjoy. So all the streaming stuff, uh, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Apple and stuff, they all use this format to deliver the audio experience. So has anybody in the crowd like has watched Netflix shows or Disney Plus shows with Dolby Atmos or been to a Dolby Atmos theater? Anybody hasn't? You need... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, like uh, if you if you have a, like a phone and you have like a Netflix subscription, the four, the four one that you share with your friends. Uh, you can go to shows that Netflix produce like Ext Extraction, Six Underground. They are all produced in Dolby Atmos. And if you have AirPods with iPhone, they would stream the Dolby Atmos stream to you. Uh, if you have any device with Dolby Atmos, it will stream the stream to you. And uh, well, you can give me your name and if I ever get a free Atmos ticket, right, I will send it to you and you can experience Dolby Atmos. I do get 
one or two cinema tickets here and there. Yeah. So this is what is used. But today uh, we talk about music and that's really the hardest question simply because um, we have done mono, music came from mono and it was stereo for what, 60 years or 50 over years, right? So there's a lot of questions like, do we really need music in Dolby Atmos? Right, it's like, do we need that? We are, we are so good in doing stereo. Uh, even, even myself, I've spent easily 20, 30 years trying to make stereo and trying to make stereo sound good. I'm still trying to make stereo sound good today, right? But do we really need do, um, music in Dolby Atmos? So let me share some benefits that you can get out of it. So one is uh, a perceptional change. So we always look at music as we are looking at a band performing in front of you. I mean, this comes from hundreds of years with the orchestra and stuff like this. So one of the advantages is we can look at music with a different perception where you are inside the band rather than you're just watching the band. So that gives you a whole new perspective, a whole new way of perceiving music. And it has turned out very successful for us because to be honest, Dolby Atmos in Dolby was really developed for the theater. And there was one time they decided like, oh, let's try do something with it. So it started with clubbing. And for a few years in San Francisco, they, they were rig speakers in the club and actually play Dolby Atmos dance music. And people really enjoy it. And that kind of triggered the, the whole direction to music. And then what happened was they tie, we tied up some deals with record labels, mixed a few track in Atmos and had a, and did a show. I think it was NAM in 2019 or something like that, or 20, no, I think 2019, because after that it's COVID. That NAM event, like everybody that came and heard it, loved it. And then that's how we kind of found a, a, a new way of using this format. So it, number one, it gives a whole different perspective that I believe, or we believe very strongly that the world welcomes it. And if you have not experienced it, uh, let me know. I'm, I'll try my best to Maybe the next time I give a talk or what, you know, do it in a studio where you can hear music, where you are inside the music rather than you're outside the music. Right. So it really expands the creative palette for artists because now you're not just thinking stereo, you're not trying to squeeze everything into two speakers. So the, the name of the game for stereo is you have to squeeze, 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 and then after squeeze, 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 it becomes so small, then you have to make loud, 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 loud. So <laughs> it's very ironic. And Trust me, I've done this for a long time, trying to do this. We'll squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then after that, we try to beef it up as loud as possible. With Atmos, you don't have to do that because you have a 360 space. You have height and all this. And the best part is all the squeezing, Dolby Atmos will do for you because we will render it down the stereo. And Adobe Atmos stereo will be better than a normal stereo simply because you could add height information to it. You can add real information to it. To kind of do that, in stereo, it's just not possible and not accurate enough. Right, so this is the difference in creative palette. And to me, it's clarity. Um, because I did so much squeezing, and then I try to expand it again, it's still squashed. So what happens is when you listen to music inside a space, right, you could really exp you could really hear the individual instruments a lot more. And for me, the vocals are really most important. and. There's a sense of intimacy in the vocals that I never felt before. So that's the reason why I think that um, music in Dolby Atmos is a whole new experience and it's kind of pretty much in demand and Apple kind of adopted it as to deliver spatial audio. And then from there, uh, you know, letting people experience the whole like 360 music, spatial music kind of concept. Any, any question so far? I'm talking too fast, too singlish, no? <laughs> okay, so um, everybody here heard of Apple Music, right? And everybody heard of Spatial Audio, right? Has everybody heard Spatial Audio in some form or sense? Or, or anybody has not heard it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you've not, you've not heard it also, okay. Uh, anybody else? Uh, okay, that's good. What do you think of it? Like, is it like weird or strange? Any, sorry, it's distracting. Okay, interesting. Mm. What what distracted you? 
Or behind. Oh, then you're not used to it. Okay. That's a good point. It, it would feel quite weird to have a guitar behind. That's true. Knowing most guitarists want attention, they're usually in the front. Yeah. No, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, any other, that's, thanks, thanks for saying something. Yeah? Any, anybody? Like, was strange about it? No? Like, do you even like it? Like, or you're like 50-50? Yeah. You like it? Okay, great. And, a, anyone? Like, oh, I hate it, man. Anybody hates it? Uh? Mm. No? I'm feeling weird. I, I guess I, I felt weird too, man. Like, oh, strange. Like, why would I do that? Then I think, okay, never mind. Let's keep an open mind. They're like, oh, okay, it's not too bad. <laughs> no. uh, anything else? I, my stance is, I think there are some songs we shouldn't touch. Uh, I, I used to teach and I used to tell students this. There are some legendary songs that you don't try to cover and you don't touch. Because something happens so sacredly for that song and it's a like, legendary hit. And if you touch it, then you realize, oh my God. Why should I mess with this? Yeah, but moving on the future, I have heard a lot of electronic music done with that, uh, live music done with that, and I really like the. You know, even if it was the guitar was behind, um, yeah. Okay, so any any more any comments? Okay, no. So let me move on. So uh, you'll be very curious on how to how you want to produce Dolby Atmos, right? And at the end of the day, there's three components. I just kind of water it down to three components. You will always need the renderer because that's where the magic happens, right? That is our technology. And of course, you need a door, be it use Pro Tools, Nuendo, Cubase. Um, and then you always need a monitoring setup. Uh, this is typical of mixing, right? If you mix in stereo, you have to hear in stereo. So to mix in 3D, you kind of have to hear in 3D. And you can start something something like from headphones to something like 714 or 916, which is typical 7.1 setup with four height speakers or six height speakers, so to speak. Yeah. And in the whole workflow, right, that's how it kind of works. Uh, if you look at this dotted line, uh, anything on the left, it's pretty simple. It is what we are doing every day now. We get all our sound sources, we dump into the uh, digital audio workstation and we kind of balance it. And we spend all the time tweaking little 0 0.1 dB to 3 dB that nobody really cares and then export the audio, right? And then in Dolby Atmos, it's the same thing except that your audio workstation cannot output the stereo or find one anymore. It has to output a Dolby Atmos file. And to output a Dolby Atmos file, you need a Dolby Atmos renderer. Okay, and the renderer will create the monitoring. That means whether it's binaural or multi-speaker for you to mix in Adobe Atmos because you need to hear it in 3D. And it will create a master file for you to de deliver to Apple Music if you want. Yeah. So the, the master file is called ADMB Wave. Uh, and that is the one that uh, if you uh, sign up to Believe or Orchard or all the big labels, they will take this file and give it to Apple. So. Since you're all sound engineers, then I go into even deeper. So that was the block diagram. So what happened is, uh, this is Pro Tools, so you have all these pictures, right? Uh, yeah, you have the singer, the musician, the sample and the loops and the reverbs, right? All in the workstation. And in this workstation, you will send out 128 tracks to the renderer. So the format allows 128 tracks, right? And each track is, uh, it's just one track of audio, like one bus, right? Okay. So what we have done is the f we have split the 128 tracks to bed and objects. And this is the part that makes it very confusing for a lot of people. So please uh, give me 30 seconds of your time. So <laughs> what happened is we championed this whole thing called objects mixing and all that kind of stuff and X, Y, Z, right? But if you think about it, 10 years ago when Dolby said, oh, let's do Dolby Atmos and went to a Hollywood dub stage and he tell the mixing guy, right, like, hey, for the next Star Wars Avengers movie, oh, forget 7.1, man, just do Dolby Atmos, use objects. What do you think his reaction would be? Yeah, he would be, huh? Are you serious? Can you just get the hell out of here? Like, don't disturb me because I need to deliver this in two weeks, right? So, in Dolby Atmos, right, we still allow you to mix in channel base. Right, so if you still decide to mix in stereo, 
you still can mix in stereo, and we call that a bit. So the bit, you can be a stereo bit, a 5.1 bit, but on top of the bit, we add objects for you to move it 3D. Because the, like a 5.1 bit, you can't go 3D, right? But the objects can go 3D. Right, so we still allow you to do the old way, and what you can do is, you can use any width of a bit only up to 10 channels. And the widest you could do is 7.1.2. So you can, that's the only way you can do it. Like the widest you can do it, the first 10 channels of the 128 channels is reserved for a bit. It cannot change. It's the Adobe Atmos format. Right? And that is allow you to, you want to do bus compression, you want to mix in stereo, but have five objects flying around, you can do that. So this is how we have adapted it for people who are still wanting to use the old way of mixing, which is going to the buses. Right? And then after which, you can have up to 118 objects. Honestly, I've seen hundreds of Atmos files. Nobody kind of use 118 objects at one go. Uh, it means that at this instant in time, there are 118 sounds playing. Uh, it's simply just overwhelming. Uh. Most of the time, 64 objects plus bit, it's pretty much for Adobe Atmos file. Right? Yeah. With movies, it tend to be a bit more because uh, movies, they have multiple bits, so they actually can create first bit is a dialogue bit, and then they have a, a music bit and a effects bits. And then after that, they have object number X, what to what is for music, what to what is for dialogue. So in, the, in, in something like a, a, a Netflix master, it looks a little bit more complicated, but the concept is the same. We give you the option to still mix in channel base and do objects so that the combination is will be uh, able to deliver the experience that you're looking for, old school, new school, at the same time future proof it for future formats in the future. Okay, and the 3D panel are built into most of the door already. If you don't have a 3D panel, we will give you one. It's free. It's called the Adobe Atmos Music Panel. It's downloadable on our website. Uh, it outputs the file, which is ADM B-Wave. That's the master file. Whether it's for Netflix or for Apple Music, they will still take ADM B-Wave. There are a few other versions of the master file, which uh, I won't go into detail today, but uh, you could do that. Uh, and the best part is you can still output normal wave files. That means you can output your Atmos mix in a stereo file. Uh, with the thing burn in, like binaural burn in, a 5.1 file with uh, de derived from Adobe Atmos Master with high information burn into 5.1. So when it plays in 5.1, the five surrounding speakers will have virtualization of height. You will still hear some high information in the speaker, but it won't be as accurate or as clear as if, if you had high speakers. Huh? Make sense? Mm. Okay. So a lot of people do this. Uh, in the early days, where I was starting to build the ecosystem, what happened was everybody like, I don't need to do Adobe Atmos, it's, what the hell? Uh, then I said, well, you can do Adobe Atmos, but export 5.1 for the delivery. And, and people like that because they could say, oh, actually in this show there was a plane flying over, I wanted to do the plane flying over, but I can't do that in a 5.1 panel. So what they did is they do it in an Atmos panel, but virtualize it in 5.1 and deliver the 5.1. And maybe two years later or three years later, they came back and sell off the Adobe Atmos Master because it was requested for. All right, so this is one of the things that we did. And uh, any questions so far on this? Oh, and the renderer does the monitoring. So you can monitor in binaural to mix in 3D or you can monitor in 7.1.4 to mix in, uh, to, to hear the actual speakers and, and actually, and actually mix with speakers in 3D or in headphones in 3D. Yeah. Any any questions so far? Yes, we. Uh, I'm not so much a joystick person because the joystick is very expensive, and I don't really want to spend on it. But if you have an S6, you can use the joystick. But I just use the mouse. Uh, how we do 3D space because with the mouse is you can't lift the mouse like this to do 3D space, so we have to do it a two prong approach. I'll just do a circle and then I will automate a knob that makes it goes up and down. Yeah, but if you had joystick, right, you could have one joystick doing the height and one joystick doing the surrounds, and then you can move in 3D space. 
But most of the time, what we do is, um, like for example, if you have watched uh, Evita or something, and there was a bullets, because uh, I watched Evita with in, a, in Adobe Cinema with with Adobe Atmos, and I could really feel the bullets were flying out of the screen, and it was 3D, and it was like really realistic for me. And like the bullet is too fast for your hand to catch the joystick anyway. No? So what we do is we we just spot the frames. Huh? So we know the bullet went from here to here. Then we just go to automation and draw the line. Mm. Yeah. Any questions? No? OK. Yeah, so uh, just to share with you guys, if you are using a door, Pro Tools, Nuendo, uh, Logic Pro, all this uh, needs to be, can be paired with a renderer. But as we develop the tools, right, Logic, uh, Cubase, Nuendo, and like, Blackmagic uh, Resolve, uh, they have the renderer built in, right? so you don't need to buy our tools to produce the thing anymore. Mm. Yeah. In the past, uh, but the Resolve, you need to buy the studio, uh, not the free one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we, we can already have the renderer built in. Uh, Pro Tools still requires a renderer, although it allows you to export the file, but you kind of still need the renderer to kind of uh, pair it up and do most of the things. So yes, like logic is literally open up logic, set at most mode on, and you're ready to go kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And <coughs> uh, Apple has its own renderer for spatial. So with logic, you get to use the spatial renderer as uh, to produce for the Apple Music. And uh, yeah, so very easily accessible. So. Uh, Typical production setup from the easiest, the entry to the best uh, is simply with the easiest one is literally a laptop and just running logic uh, is enough. And then you just use headphone and you can mix it. Literally, you can if you have a MacBook, right, you can start tonight. There's a 90 day logic, 10.7 uh, and above. You can literally plug in your headphones and try it tonight. Uh, and and uh, there's tons of YouTube videos that explain step by step how to do it. So. It's, it's not difficult at all. I, I kind of, there was a talk I did, I actually did the whole, I just like, oh, I just turned on, throw in a few loops and, and made a song like in 15 minutes. Huh? Yeah. So that's the easiest way to do it on like a Mac. And the good part is if you have the renderer, yeah, or you even just logic, you can deliver the ADMB wave, you can hear the headphones output and um, you, you, I am not sure whether you can do the channel-based deliveries, but with the renderer, you can definitely do that. Okay, so the like top kind of what we have a Dolby certified kind of uh, Atmos mixing studio, like for home entertainment, music, and stuff. Uh, then we will require something like you need to have a seven point one point four setup. Uh, you of course it has to be good acoustics and stuff like this. And then um, the interesting part is we have the renderer software running off another computer. Yeah, and when we do that, when the renderer software is running off another computer, we call this the RMU, which stands for Rendering Mastering Unit. Right, so uh, as uh, I have made you very interested and you, as you go along the YouTube videos, right, and stuff, right, when somebody says RMU, technically it means a computer just running the renderer. When somebody says renderer, it means the renderer and the computer are probably in the same, uh, the renderer and the door is in the same computer. That's pretty what it means. Yeah. So if you look at anything that talks about Adobe Atmos, the word renderer definitely comes out. Uh, our latest renderer is called the renderer 5.0. We actually compress a lot of features. Uh, we, we usually have different versions of the renderer. And to help everybody, we actually put all the features into one version. It's called the renderer 5.0. Uh, so if you are doing music, Netflix, anything, uh, you could do that. Uh, the only difference in Adobe Atmos is for cinema is not the same. And personally, I don't look after cinema or dub stages, uh, but the renderer for cinema is slightly different. So if you are going to do a whole dub stage, it's not quite the same. The, theoretic, the theory and the principle is exactly the same. But the way it renders and the file formats in a DCP is slightly different. 
Okay, so this is a setup of a 7.1.4 setup. You have left, center, right, left surround, rear, uh, right surround, left rear surround, right rear surround, and four speakers on top. Uh. So if you have a 916, you add two more speakers, left and right, and then you have six speakers on top. Yeah. And here's a picture of a 916 studio. Uh. So you see the three speakers on top. And then you have, uh, this is the right, then the right white speaker, right surround speaker, and the right uh, rear right speaker. Yeah. Anybody knows where this is? No? Oh, okay. This is, a, this is a studio in Malaysia. It's built off in a bungalow. Yeah, somewhere in, uh, I think, PJ, uh, Petaling Jaya. It's a big bungalow, and then this, this guy builds this. He's one of our earliest adopters in Dobby Atmos. It's called Maverick Studios. You know. If you're ever in KL, yeah, go and check them out. Uh, they're a pretty cool guy. Um, and and like hear the system and stuff. Huh? Okay, so um, in case you want to really go geeky, this is uh, the delivery specs. It has to be 48, 24 kilohertz. It has to be 24 frames. Uh, it has to be true peak minus one and stuff like this. Uh, you can find all this on the internet. Un unless somebody has a question on this, uh, I don't want to kind of get you all to, to sleep. But one of the main things when you do Dolby Atmos music, it is naturally softer, or, or in terms of perceived loudness is lower. Simply because we, we are positioning a lot of sounds in 3D, and if we, if we ever have to fold down to to a stereo file, right? If everything was at full dB, full scale, right? By the time you fold down, everything just exploded already. Right, so we, so to be safe and making sure that we provide enough headroom for different renders, what we do is we bring it. We, we Apple requires the loudness to be at minus eighteen. Yeah, so in case uh, you're not this kind of geeky mastering kind of guy, most music is at minus twelve. Some, if you push few more times the sugar cane through the squeezing machine, right, you can get up to minus nine. Uh, the, uh, LKFS, IVFS, so it's mini, but minus 18 is pretty soft compared to a typical stereo master. Right. Most, most of it is about minus 12. The cool guys are minus 14. At most, it's minus 18. The one that really squeeze, squeeze, squeeze until the sugar cane have no juice, right, is at minus 9 or minus 10. Uh, the one when you play, you go, whoa, wow. But that's super good, man, because it's so loud. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's just, that's just, I. Everybody asks that question every time I say it, but it is supposed for Apple Music alone is twenty four frames. But for uh, films, films definitely is twenty four frames because it's simply. But for like Netflix, all is all twenty five. Hmm. Uh, no, it doesn't because the Apple Music Master is one master, then the Netflix one is another master. Yeah, but use 25 frames. It's just like your door setting to 25 frames or 24 frames. Huh? Yeah. Because a lot, a lot, a lot of people actually wanted to <clears throat> a lot of people actually asked that question, uh, why is it 24 when it's not film? But uh, and a lot of broadcasters do at 25. But for Apple Music it's just at 24. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so uh, there's a few ways to check it. So you can burn a stereo, you can have an MP4 export from the renderer. Uh, you need the renderer to export the MP4 file and you put it on the iPhone and it will play back exactly like how it will play back uh, on the Apple service, which is, you must use the files application. Uh, you can't use Google Playback or Preview or something. Like this, uh. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me. And uh, just, to, just to lead Edwin in, uh, Toby Amos is used in sports also. And uh, I'm not sure if you know UEFA, uh, EPL, uh, those football fans, they do have live Dolby Atmos. That means Dolby Atmos that's produced live. The workflow is very different. Um, it's not using, there's some kind of renderer involved, but it's not using like the Apple renderer and stuff. Uh, and obviously live production and post production is very different, right? You can't have the bullet and then you try to follow the bullet. You will never catch it fast enough in life. So, so in live production is slightly different. And what we do is in live production, we build a 514 mix. So we use a, a, a console and we actually create a 514 mix to create the what we call the 3D sound mix. It's pretty much channel based. And then we use our encoders or we 
and from the encoding, we create the rendering data, and after that, we <coughs> we transmit it where it can. This five one four can adapt to different uh, sound playback also. Uh, we don't use our encoders are not used anymore. This is kind of an old slide, but uh, I just want to. I iterate the fact that we use an encoder to create the, 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 the presentation metadata so that we know what are objects and what are non-objects. And one of these live performance things that is very good is we can have the objects, like one object is English commentary, one object is uh, like Spanish commentary or German commentary. And then in the encoder, it can be switched like, oh, this is going to Germany, but one mix, one at most mix that can switch different languages. And you can have fans and stuff. Uh, so this is something that we strive to do. And um, like UEFA and all this, uh, I think closest to our region, Astro has, in the last UEFA, Astro actually offered Dolby Atmos as a, as a service so that you, if you had a box you, and, and a soundbar, you can actually experience football in Dolby Atmos. And a lot of it is in the capture which brings me to the end of my slide. A lot of it is in the capture where we have a 5.1, so uh, 514. So without further ado, let, uh, let Edwin talk about a new mic that captures exactly in 514 and is really good for immersive production. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any questions before I go? No? Uh, not at the church though. Not at the, uh, church music a lot. Uh, quite a few, like uh, people mixing for for church uh, hymn. I mean songs, praise and worship songs. But in not inside a church. Uh, yeah. yeah, we we do have this technology where it's called Dolby Life, where the venue itself is Dolby Atmos. So in Vegas we have this venue, and uh, I think Imagine Dragons just played uh, for our event, where like the guitar sound is behind us. Uh, but in a live venue, the guitar is in front, but the sound is behind or something like this, and the sound actually moves around uh, in the sound. And uh, we call it Dolby Live. Uh, you can search the MGM Theatre, I think, in Vegas. If I'm not wrong, it's MGM Theatre, and it's just called Dolby Live. Eh? Uh, so church, a church praise and worship session will be something like this. Uh, it's not a it's not a product that we we are selling now. Or it, the to be very honest, uh, like. Please shut the video camera kind of stuff. Uh, the we don't have a full-on solution for it yet, but it will happen. Uh. the mixing console will send audio into the renderer. The renderer will route all the will map it to the right speakers and move around. Mm. But we have done it as a kind of concept uh, in in Vegas. Uh, you can read about it on the internet. Uh. Any more? No. No. Okay. Thanks. So. Uh, Thank you for having me, and uh, I hope to see you soon. And if you ever, uh, my email is very easy to remember. So my name is Jeffrey Low, right? So my Jeffrey is spelled with G, so G L O W Glow. Most people kind of know me as Glow in terms of the mixing world. So Glow at Adobe.com. Just email me any, if you have any questions. All right? Okay. Thank you very much. Hello, hi everyone. My name is Edwin. I'm from Audio Technica Southeast Asia. Uh, we'd just like to introduce to you, uh, related to what we've talked about, the immersive sound. So we actually have the new uh, surround mic here. All right, surround mic is something you know, but uh, the term is actually called immersive mic. Over to my right over here. All right, so if you want to test out this mic, uh, maybe after the presentation uh, later this afternoon, or if you want to have a session where you want to bring down some sort of percussive or musical instruments to test it out and record. We can have an arrangement with City Music to record it over here. Um, because it's a bit noisy here, um, later on, if you have the chance to play with it, maybe grab a guitar, or hold the mic and swing it around the guitar to let you hear. We have some headphones connected, you can hear it in binaural. So um, on the software over here is actually a logic with the Atmos renderer that uh, Jeff was talking about. I'll just show you some slides to introduce uh, to our system. Right, so immersive audio microphone. Uh, the model of the mic is called BP3600. Right, it's to capture three-dimensional sound bits at sporting events, concerts, virtual reality, anything you can think of to capture sounds from every direction, right? Right, Cap 
Um, this is a practical mic. Uh, it's a solution that is provided by Audio Technica. Um, it's actually been implemented. Um, it was researched before Tokyo 2020. It was actually deployed uh, during the Olympic Games, uh, and, and it will still carry on be used. Right? In the broadcasting world over there, sporting events are very big. Um, and of course, MotoGP is used widely. So every race you see, and if the region you stay has a broadcaster sending immersive sound, you'll be able to hear it. Uh, online streams, I don't think they export it in immersive uh, at more sound, so it's quite hard to hear it. Right. So it's the, the main aim is to establish a truly immersive uh, audio image right, that can be integrated easily right, into various formats without much processing. The main thing is to make it easy. There are a lot of other surround mics in the market, but it comes with dedicated encoders, decoders, lots of processing just to do it. So um, this was actually made in the direction of sporting to be implemented. And it's actually implemented in front of us right now, mic to uh, uh, audio recorder. That's the, that's the Zoom F8N, it's an eight channel multi-track recorder and it's USB into a laptop. Just now on my the other screen, you guys saw, this is actually the sound of the mic coming in already. So we plug in your headphones, you'll hear it already. All right, so more about this mic. Right, it's a 360 degrees immersive audio mic. It's to achieve realistic experiences in the spatial realm. Right, spatial is something we understand more nowadays. Right, uh, the main aim is for you to be there without actually being there. Right, so for example, like at a big music festival, uh, you're watching there, but you want to feel the whole crowd, you want to feel the whole vibe. Right, this mic will help the viewers experience that. Right, it's to capture the actual sounds in the space. Meaning say this is to capture something that's really there. It's different from post-production where you do sound design, you put sound effects in the different uh, positions, in the different objects, right? This is when you're going to capture it actually there and it's going to interact truly with the space to capture the sounds in the correct timing, the, the distance and the depth, the height, you know, all those kind of things is to give an accurate image, right? So if it features eight hypercardoid condenser capsules, right, it's an eight channel mic, right? So each microphone is a, has a 12mm hypercardioid, right? it's for consistent pickup, uh, is to produce something that is separated, so the left and right is very different, right? they're not going to overlap too much, as little as possible, the top and the back is not supposed to interact, overlap too much, so it's to do that separation, that's a very key thing to have. Right. And of course, the, the, the mic is ultimately still very small in the end, there are other mics around that are maybe two, three times the size just to get the same effect. Right, so that's why we use mini capsules to keep the whole unit small and lightweight. Right, so it breaks out to eight XLR analog mics. So it's a full on analog mic, it's not a digital mic. Right, so it has a cable five meters, right, and then you can also extend it to 20 meters. But why is it kept analog is to, be, to provide a flexible workflow so you can connect it to many various ways, not tied to a certain kind of format or style. Right, so you can actually transport it in this small little pouch, right, uh, you can detach everything and just come back. So the case is about this big only, and it's very light now. It's like a few grams only. Right, so one of the ways that we, know, we hear it, like what Jeff was talking about, is it's pre-configured pre for convenience, accurate immersive audio capture. So with the eight channel mics, with a scientific term will be a near consistent mic array, which mirrors that of the ambient speaker channel spe uh, setup you have at home, which is a 5.1.4, the Atmos setup. So these mics are actually pointing and to emulate the same kind of layout. So we have the front two speakers, right? That will become the, the mics left and right. With the back two speakers, it will be the mics back, left and right. And same for the top as well. So it just translates that to that. When you're actually pro uh, producing and mixing, it will just be panned in that same direction. So if I want it to be at the back left speaker, I'll just use channel seven, because channel seven is assigned to pick up sounds from my back left towards that way. So which means this. That, cap, that mic there is pointing that direction. So it's to translate directly to the setup. All right, so production workflow is very simple with the mic to the eight channel audio interface, and then you out into a uh, software, a DAW like Logic. Right, so importantly, as what we covered, we need to have a Atmos plugin inside, and it, it needs to be routed in the 5.1.4 speaker layout, and the renderer is there to actually give the whole imaging. Uh. And we monitor in binaural, right, so that we can hear it, because not everybody has an Atmos setup at home. Just with the binaural uh, renderer, you, with headphones, you can actually hear it as well. 
Okay, of course, if you have an MOS setup in your actual space, that would be perfect. You actually can do it the same way as well. Right. So um, what are some things to record? Actually, anything you can think of, anything can be creative. So in, here in Southeast Asia, spotting is maybe not as big as in Europe and US. We're going to apply it more towards music. So orchestras would be a great one. So um, uh, being creative, most of the time when you watch orchestra, it's from the point of the audience. But what if I was to give you the view of the conductor or a view of one of the players in the center of the orchestra. You can actually plant the mic in the center and pick up sounds from every direction and, and perhaps you know, let somebody hear how it sounds like inside. Things like this, right? Instrumental kind of per, uh, setups, percussive, a, a drum circle, a drum circle standing around the mic or even people standing on a higher platform on the second floor can be playing down so you can hear sounds from above as well as lower height. And some of the cool applications will actually be in a choir as well. So um, a choir in a cathedral, because cathedrals will have a lot of reverb and reflections, I think it will give a very nice thing. Right, and then of course, sound design. Um, anyone who does this kind of uh, interactive stuff, foley and ambience in a certain space, or gaming effects as well. Right, and of course, sporting events, like stadium sound, live action, crowd cheer, being immersed. Right. Uh, we covered where to experience it. We have the Netflix, Disney Plus, Apple, Apple Music. So um, a lot of this is, is the format for what is being played out. But if you're going to go through the whole flow of production, um, how do you capture the sound as realistically as possible before you process it? Right In the end, maybe your video, your film comes out on one of these platforms. It will be great. Applies to music as well. So you can capture music in a certain space um, to get a very realistic effect rather than using plugins uh, to emulate surround, maybe it might not be as natural. Right? So the files encoded, these are some of the file formats, M2, TS, uh, MKV, MPEG-H, 3D, and the formats of um, MOS that we're talking about. And then uh, 360 videos, possibly encoded with binaural. So there's a number of YouTube videos where there are content creators who are very, who specialize in um, 3D ca capture. They play with a lot of 360 cameras. They do, do tutorials about how do you embed your surround project, your audio surround project in and embed it with the 360 video. Right, that's taking up to one level, right? As you pan the video, the sound, you want it to move along with your video, right? So there's ways and softwares to do that. And of course, when you have VR goggles, for example, the VR goggles, you will enable it to be triggered based on your head panning and all that. So all that is a deeper process, but that's all possible through this whole purpose of making this mic. And uh, you can, of course, have it at homes and theaters with an Atmos speaker setup, right? And anytime at home, you have Logic, we have uh, Pro Tools, play out of your DAW software with the Atmos render, you can have the same effect being experienced. All right, just a quick video uh, to show you. Um, right, so um, I'll just fast forward in this video as well. So we have this, this mic and then this uh, video, um, you see we can put it online, it's an MP4 file where you can actually hear Atmos um, played out and uh, uh, bounce out to a binaural effect so you, anyone can hear on headphones. Right, so this is showing the mic is being, um, how it's designed to capture in a certain kind of angle to achieve the um, directionality and the separation. So being on the move, field mixers are battery operated, right? You can go, move out on a go, go to the hawker center, go to a festival, go to F1, right? um, go anywhere in Singapore or wherever you are to pick up, bring it overseas as well. It's all portable, you can move it on the go. Can I fast forward this way? Yeah. So this effect was um, our colleagues, um, one of the content creators, I think in Japan, was trying to emulate uh, a plane flying past to hear between a mono sound as well as an immersive sound. So we can't hear it right now. Um, I have it on headphones, you can come hear it later on. I right, used to, to emulate that kind of thing and to feel how the plane actually goes above you from left to right and feel the, how it interacts with the ground effect. Right, so, and another one, this is, uh, you'll probably look ridiculous, but it's worth the effort to walk around with a 360 camera and mount it the surround mic and pick up the beautiful sounds in the space. Right, this could be something like uh, those uh, walking tours where you want to give people a tour of the place and to feel how it really feels like to be there, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, very cool. And then they have the training effect to hear between mono and as well as, as this um, well, very wonderful experience to have this. Yeah, so it's, this is just showing you how you actually assemble it. Um, it's a very small mic. 
Um, you can detach every one of them. It's color coded so that you actually pair it to the channel 128. Yep. So uh, we'll be here tomorrow as well. If any of you in the area, we're talking about the headsets. We have this stream set over here, as well as the podcast mic AD2 2040. There's a new USB version right now. So this setup will still be here tomorrow. If you want to hear it and play with it, uh, we'll be standing by. If you have any questions, you can look for me. Um, after this, we're actually going to hand it over to City Music. Uh, they're going to talk about the new mixer. So we're, I'm, I'm done for this. So just look for me or anything. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we will take a short break. We currently have some refreshments over at the counter. So do help yourself with the refreshments. Maybe we'll resume here in about maybe about 10 minutes time. Right, see you guys soon.
Yeah, me too. Uh, every time I see a lot of musicians today, right? Yeah, again. this is absolutely different from what we usually have, actually. He asked me to do again. Again? Mm. So yeah, okay, one more. Right, are we live now? Right. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of City Music, we'd like to thank you guys for dropping by to our new space here, City Music 3.0. Um, hope you have enjoyed the refreshments. So, today, I'm uh, okay. Let me introduce myself. I'm Lionel, aka Smash Up Junkie, uh, content creator on YouTube. And I have with me today, uh, my name is Mike, also known as Mayuni Omar. So, uh, we are here today going to present to you the Mackie DLZ Creator Mixer. Mixer. And it's not just any ordinary, ordinary mixer that you see in the market. This one is a bit different, it's a bit special. Mm -hmm. So, uh, maybe we will show you guys how the mixer looks like on the screen itself. Right, can we maybe switch over to the top? Right, so, on the DLZ Creator mic, yep. what's so beautiful about it? The first thing when I look at it, the 10.1 inch screen. Huge screen, no really easy interface. No, okay. everything looks clean, uh, Mike. Everything right. just looks clean. Okay, right. Sorry, Lino. Before we go into this, right, uh, every one of us has a wish list of how a mixer should be. Mm. You know, like I would love a mixer to be like A, B, C, D. You know, yeah. you probably have a you know, have your own wish list. Yeah. So that's the problem where you can't get a mixer that fits to everybody. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So maybe you know, for me, you know, as as uh, as uh, uh, people who use it as differently, you know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, uh, you know, an audio guy, I would love to have okay, maybe a one k down. I get to you know a little bit of that EQ of that certain frequency, mm -hmm. and then I get this. Um, okay, I would love to have a compressor that gives me that you know a kind of a hard uh, knee, for example, and and so on. So I have my own request yeah. of what right. I would love to have a mixer, and and there will be a person who say. This is too much for me. Too much, you know, yeah. it's like, and and then he goes like, uh, I'm just a newbie. I just want to create my content. Mm -hmm. I just want to plug a mic, mm -hmm. and yeah, this is a little bit too complex. Yeah, and that's where right. the beauty of the right. DLG creator comes in. It adapts to the user. Yes, any, that's the word. Any, no, even if you're a beginner, you just started streaming this, or like your first stream, your first mixer, you're not sure what to do. You're you're, you're overwhelmed by all the knobs and buttons. It starts, it adapts to the novice, yep. the intermediate, and even the professionals as well. Right. Yeah. So the mixer is designed for, I would say, you can create your yeah. own term. That means mm -hmm. you will be the one that is controlling the mixer rather than the mixer is controlling you. Exactly. Okay. So the mixer is adapting to the user. This is one of the first mixers that is doing this in the industry. So let me just show you on the screen uh, of the DLZ creator right now. Okay. Once you put up the DLZ creator, Okay. Uh, let me see. Huh? Yeah. We not. We're not going to go through. We're not going to go through uh, no, yeah. that kind of thing. We're just going to show you how fun yes, this is. How uh. easy to Can use. we show this one? Okay. Yeah. So on the DLZ creator, can we swap over to? Yeah. All right. When you boot up the console for the first time, you'll be greeted with this screen, right? So simple, Mike. Let me show you how simple okay. is this. Yeah. You can see, right? There's an easy, easy. mode. And easy mode. Easy now. Really? Okay, for Lionel who is doing a mm -hmm. content creator, you see, he's a content creator who generates his uh, YouTube by doing a lot of music reviews or yep. guitar reviews. Correct. So he just want to plug and go. Plug and go, yeah. So you just go easy mode. Let's, let's do it. Let's right? do the easy yeah. mode, right? Easy mode. So yeah. when we boot up the DLG creator for the first time, you'll be greeted with this screen. I'll set it to easy. Then you can see at the bottom there's a setup assistant, right? Mm. I'll just select on this, press next. Now, everything is on screen. So the first thing it says, just set your step. levels all to Unity, which means zero. So I'll go ahead and set that to zero. Once I have done that, I'll press to the next screen. It shows the headphone setup. Some mixers, we, where's the headphone? Are? All look the same, right? right? On this, there's a diagram on the screen. Just follow the diagram, plug in your headphones. You can plug up to four headphones on the DLZ creator. So once you plug in your headphones, next step, next. And now you can do your headphone setup, adjust yeah. your levels yeah, and stuff like blinking, that. Blinking, so yeah. you assign your headphones. There's actually a track being played in the background as well. You can adjust it, right? Then go next. Right now, now is the important one. We have four inputs. You can put in four different microphones or even four line level inputs as well, right? right. So let's say for example, all right, there's four. I'll just go ahead and press. Now it says select input one, right? Okay, so yeah, I got to intercept this. Mm. Now talking about microphones, this is a bit scary, you know. Uh, I've discussed this with a few of my friends. Yeah. So once you connect a microphone, a lot of people don't understand. There is condenser microphones. Mm -hmm. There's uh, dynamic microphones, mm -hmm. and you start to plug in, and you don't understand how to make this possible yeah. for you to use it. 
Correct. So no worries because this is what you would see on the icon. Exactly. So, so like right now, Mike is on input one, right? Yeah. Mike is using the Mackie uh, EM99B, which dynamic is a dynamic microphone. microphone. It's a large diaphragm dynamic microphone. Mm -hmm. So if you look on the screen, you can see at the bottom, they have a EM99B there already. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll just select this, okay? Mm. Then I'll just go next. Yeah. So right. organically, you will get the, the best sound of your EM99. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about EQ and all those sort mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, 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 editing that you probably want to get the best result. So they will automatically yeah. give the best result of this microphone. Yeah. So like when I mentioned, we had uh, mentioned adaptive learning, right? Yeah. So this is where the mixer will adapt to you. So Mike, let's say for now you're speaking a bit close, right? Yeah, right. Maybe take one step back. Okay. 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 So you can hear Mike's voice is a bit softer now because it's away from the microphone. Mm -hmm. Now, you can see this button on the screen. It says, listen and set for me. So once I press this, Mike will start to speak into the microphone and automatically the DLZ creator will adapt adjust. and adjust accordingly to Mike's voice. Right, let's try this, Mike. Yeah. Ready? Okay, Mike, ready? three, two, one. Thanks. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to CD Music 3.0. Thank you very you much. You can see that the line level just popped up, mm. right? For okay. those in case you missed again, let's do it one more time, okay, Mike. Maybe stand time. a bit further, a little okay. bit more. Okay. Yeah. So okay. look at the red line here. Okay, I'm going to press listen and set up for me. Let's set for me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sydney Music 3.0. Thank you for See, coming. See, it pops up. So Thank now, very much. the line level is set. You don't need to deal with gain. You don't need to deal with, don't know how long it's going to be. This automatically sets it for you, right? So once you have done this, you can go next, all right? Then you set up for input two, so on and so forth, for each individual microphone, up to four different microphones, right? So like, like mine, I'm using a different microphone. I will just set it accordingly. So let's keep this since we already have mics on ready. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sounds good. Right? Okay, number three, four. So now we have channel five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not a bit complicated, uh. Why got so many channels? Uh? Okay, not okay. To worry. not to worry. So channels five and six, you can put your line level inputs. Okay, maybe you want to connect a different external me media player, anything you want, even for USB audio, your USB audio from your computer, you can also channel it back into right. the mixer. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's okay, let's skip five, six, seven, eight. Lah. Yeah. We go straight to Bluetooth. It's quite straightforward, lah. Lah, actually. Yeah. See that? Yeah. So on the DLZ creator, you have functionality for to connect Bluetooth devices into the DLZ creator. Right, right now I already have my phone pre set up, so it's easy to go. Right. So okay, let's see. So right, you ask me, okay, want to pair or not? Okay, I already paired already. Okay. okay. So let's 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 go back to the main screen, am I? Eh? Okay. Let's, let's go back to the main screen. Okay. Let's try. Okay, so on the main screen right now. Okay, can see we have two? channel nine and ten, which is actually the Bluetooth audio. Audio. So right now, I'm already connected. Are you coming? So I'm actually playing on my phone right now. It's connected via Bluetooth, right? So if you're doing any stream, you want some background music in the background, right? You can just from a phone or even a laptop, Bluetooth audio in, you'll be able to control the levels directly on channels 9 and 10, which I have already preset earlier, right? So, what else can we do with the Bluetooth mic? Oh, okay. What else can we do with the Bluetooth? Wait, wait, wait. Talking about Bluetooth, right? Mm. Where is our boss? Uh? I think our boss is boss, uh? playing golf. Boss play golf, ah? Uh? Yeah, no. Nah. Is it? Did you doing the 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 workshop here? Then he play golf, nah. Play golf, ah? Uh? Oh, I play. He play golf. Then we know here. Okay, yeah. Okay, I, 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 I think I think the call boss, ah. Uh? We call our colleague, ah. Uh? Oh, don't call boss, ah. Uh? Don't call boss, ah. Uh? We cannot score, bro. We cannot score. Yeah, I yeah, cannot yeah. score. See, you okay, know okay. I play golf today, ma. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah, we, so we call out. So call. with the with the blue functionality, you can also connect, make a direct phone call, and the call yeah. will be on the mixer itself. Okay. So if you want to do like, for example, phone interviews and stuff, speak to your guests. Yes, you can do that. Right. So now I'm gonna call one of our colleagues right now. Hopefully, he picks up, ah. Uh. Okay. So right now I'm calling him. Yeah. So imagine this guy is uh, from uh, in US or somewhere in Timbuktu. Hey. So we can talk to him. Yeah. Hello. Hello, hello everybody. Hello caller. Welcome to the Sing Chong Show. No, I'm just kidding, bro. <laughs> yeah, we are we are doing the uh, Creator Tech Showcase right now. Yeah. We are calling yeah. you on the DLZ Creator. Do you hear us loud and clear? I hear you very, very loud. Oh, whoa. that's good. Okay. We also hear you very loud and clear. So, yeah. so, so be careful yeah. what you say, yeah. Just yeah. in case. Yeah. <laughs> just in case, uh, yeah. Just in case, yeah. So you can actually make phone calls right now and everything will be broadcasted <laughs> into your stream as well. Right. right? Okay, thank you so much, Timothy. Thank you, Tim. All right. Bye. All right. Yeah, so it's just oh, sim nice. as simple as that, right? Yeah. So let's say just now, for example, uh, we talk to your, your guest, then your guest a bit vulgar. Uh. 
How ah, Mike? Huh? Your best, okay, you know. Okay, oh, this guy this. trigger happy okay, a bit I, vulgar. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do a bit vulgar. Okay. Okay. Oh. Ready? All right. Ah. Ah. This thing might want to do. Uh, yeah, so on the DLZ creator, okay. we have a couple of sound pads here as well. Yeah. So if your guest has got a foul mouth, all right, you know, uh, finger stand by. So let's say for example, uh, hello everyone. Wa- hello, I'm back again. Yeah, this is what they call the big yeah. functions. So uh, on the DLZ creator, you also have, uh, we call this uh, samples that you can play off. You no, know, if let's say you want to play, for example, yeah, bring, bring down the volume a bit, huh? Okay. These are some of the samples. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow, some... Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can, you can have up to uh, 24 samples. Yep. You can load in your SD your card own. in with your own samples, mm-hmm. load them into each bank, yep. you can play them as and when you want, right? So the good thing is basically there's no uh, amount of how much... Con- okay, I beat you, ah. Beat you. Oh, I beat me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so apparently, you don't have to worry about mm-hmm. how much information you put on the on the pads because mm-hmm. it depends on your SD card that you load in. And you have a bigger uh, space of your your uh, wave files and stuff like that. You just load according yeah. to how much the space on your SD card. So it's Correct. like a floating loading uh, capacity. Correct. Yeah. That's yeah. And it has independent volume control. Yeah. And it allows you to also loop it if you can. There's also a function where you can loop your your audio that you insert onto these pads, mm-hmm. or you can even have, uh, uh, you know, just one time and all that. It could mean quite, quite uh, uh, simple for most of the podcast mixes we have also. Yeah, so correct. That's basically, what I like about it is basically the, all the color codes that represent yeah, also the color code on the uh, pads as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Correct. And, and, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm so good. like, this is just the easy mode, guys. This is just the easy mode. Right. Go in, set up, go. You know, it's adaptive, adaptive to the user. Be whatever, or if you just start a content creation, sure, this suits you as well. You're professional, you want to dig deep, sure, no problem as well. Mm-hmm. So let's just now we look at the easy one. Right. Now let's take a look at the pro one, okay? Oh. So just simply, I can just go in here, easy. I go to pro. Yeah, we go straight right? to pro. Go straight to pro. Pro is basically you can set every single parameter that there is in a mixer, makes it very useful even for professionals right. as well, right? Yeah. So I, for the pro part, I leave it to professional, leave it to my my uni. Okay, so it's quite easy also for people who wants to use it as a pro mixer. Now the first thing I like about it is because it has a hundred mm faders. You know, this is mostly why I like about it. So what is basically so functionable about hundred mm faders? It allows you to have more controls in terms of your volume. So if the fader is shorter, right? So what happens? So you have less of that control. And the more you, the, 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 even you go, it's, it's momentarily, you go up, you know your level, you don't have that, you know, very nice ascending volume. So this is something I like about that 100 mm, uh, which most of the audio guys will love it. So they have that kind of feature as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next thing is basically is how intuitive you can just dive into your channel. Let's say this is channel one. Mm. It's channel one, yeah. yeah just so double you, tap oh, on the icon yeah, can so you can see that. Basically, it's almost identical to the uh, the easy version. Mm-hmm. It's just that I can set effects, for example. Yeah. Well, not many basic content creators will enjoy the kind of effects, but if just in case you need to add on uh, nice psychedelic effects or even like re- as simple as reverb or, or delays and stuff like that, it's actually quite intuitive. So what I do first is basically to use these effects. Oh, nice, uh, huh? Yeah, so you can see basically, these are basically, uh, your Mackies are known for very two things, very, very interesting. One is basically the uh, preamps. They have very nice preamps, even at certain microphones that will be, uh, will need to require about 60 dB level of gain, which, you know, some of these microphones require external devices like cloud and etc. Mm-hmm. So, but this guy, this mixer, you don't need to worry about that because he has a headroom of 80 dB, which wow. is basically, that's the only 80, 80 that pretty much can sum up, you can yeah. take almost all industry yeah. microphones. Exactly. Be whether, I think most of them, you will be able yeah. to do it. Yeah. If you, if you, you know, if you do a bit of research on Mackie, Mackie is known for their Onyx preamp. It's just amazing preamps. When you go through, it's a very nice, uh, mm-hmm. clear, uh, uh, you know, sound of that preamp. So it gives you that very nice, uh, warm, but yet clarity. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing. And secondly, is the effects that they, yeah. because they, they work closely in the studio. They understand what the uh, studio people uh, would, would love to achieve. So yeah. generally, the first thing that they have is the reverb. It's a very yeah. high quality studio reverb. Let's do some reverb, uh, Mike. Yep. Okay, let me pan you with some reverb. So to add a reverb to each on Mike's channel only, right? Okay. Just simply go to overview, double tap on this. Right, right. You see there's a reverb send here. So it's going to increase. Only for my channel. Only for, for Mike's channel. 
So you can just take a mild reverb you want. Yeah. Test. Okay, here, my level is dry. Okay. And yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody. All right. All I can right. increase a bit more. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. But on my channel, it's still dry. Yeah. So you can set them to each individual channel. Right. right. So let's try it. Mike, let's try the delay. Okay, let's right. do that. Let's you go to the delay. Again. Right, let's go. Effect. Delay. Okay. So we go to the effects first. Okay. And make sure you select the delay. Delay. Make sure it's so, on. Yeah, make sure it's so on. So there's long decay. There's a list of presets. Okay, so you can adjust, Let's do space, uh, ah. Right. I'm feeling spacey right now. Okay. Just select a space, press load. And that's right. it. That's it. And then you put into your channel. Double let's click. Let's go. Double click. And boom. Hello. There we go. Hello. So you can further adjust the parameters yeah. by going to the FX screen. You can adjust like the time, you want to make it a bit, a bit longer and stuff. You can do everything here. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Nice. Let's, I like that. Let's, let's turn back. Like let's turn off the like reverb and delay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I feel much better. Right. And the other thing I like about it is mm -hmm. because you can edit basically your microphone. If you don't like what mm -hmm. basically is given as EM99, you want to change the name, you want to give mm. the flexibility to change the color of yeah. the icon, that's basically what you do on the on the pro mode. Yeah, even correct. on the even on the easy mode you can do that. Uh, so even the easy mode yeah. so you can do that. Just in case, you know, sometimes you may have your own preference of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, things that you want to label. So that's basically Yeah, that's like, talking about label, uh, you look at all the mixes, you go to any show. Uh, one tape at the bottom, uh, marker, right? Even, the channel one, channel for two. Us here at the back, so we, put oh, we also have, we're guilty of that. But on the DLZ creator, you don't have to. Yeah. On the screen itself, look, okay, for example, now, mine is on the EM99B. Mm. I just select here and double click. Mm. All right. Then after that, I'll go to channel name, change name, sorry. Yeah. Select, delete, delete, delete. I put mic. K M I K E. Uh. Right, enter. So right now, you can see mic is names on there. Nice. If let's say now I want to change the icon, right? Mike's yeah. a superstar. Give him a star. La. star la. Give you Ooh. red color. Red okay. color. I love red so, color. Red color. Let's See, go. now Mike is red color and a superstar. Okay. Steam. Yeah, so it's that simple. Just going in, touch, edit. Right? Everything is all very easy to do on the DLG right. creator. Yeah. Right. Mike, so let's let's take a look at the media one. Okay. So what so, kind of uh, what kind of uh, I'll say uh, hardware we can put in to further extend the storage? Okay, so generally you're allowed to get your, uh, you can uh, use the SD card to extend, let's say for example, uh, generally your pads that you, you load in, or you can use the external hard drive as well, so mm -hmm. it allows you to also use external hard drive, that's yeah. a good thing. You can record some more, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah we, we haven't covered the recording. Yeah, I have uh, recording feature. and auto mix. Uh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So media is one, okay, let's, let's since we're at the topic of that. Mm -hmm. So auto mix, Mike, let's tell us a bit about oh, yeah, auto mix. This is a uh, beautiful function actually. Well, this is something that we have experienced ourselves, uh, as you know, we have been doing podcasting, uh, uh, way before COVID, and mm -hmm. usually this problem when we invited guests. Mm -hmm. So what happened is basically everybody like even for us we talk yeah, we talk time. quite the same you time know, clash like, yeah we, it's very hard to digest all the information on all mm -hmm. the four channels uh, microphones. So you need somebody to talk, and then the rest will you know bring down the level. So it's, we're going to do that. So yeah. That, you know, so there's a there's a function point. called the auto mix. Yeah. Right. So your pass auto mix. If you look on the screen right now, okay. you have. Channel uh, one to channel four. one to channel four. Right. So Mike's on channel one. Okay. So let's say Mike, you're the host now, right? Okay. I give him high priority. Okay. I'm on channel four. I'm All the right. guest. I put low priority. Okay. So just listen to how the sound, uh, the the volume changes after I press low. Microphone okay. test one two. Hello, testing mic one two. Yo, no, hello. I can't, I can't over there. You keep talking. Yeah, I keep talking I, I, and yeah, yeah. Yes, and his volume yeah. is definitely yeah. way see, softer. Talk. See, we are talking. Yeah. So when I bring out. Yeah. So if I put myself to medium now. Yeah. My voice is a bit louder now. So if my still, I still got the priority. That's my one too. Yep. But if I put it to high, both of us got the same priority. That's my one too. Then he yeah. starts to get a bit messy already. So good for those scenarios of podcasts where you have four guests. Everyone starts to talk at the same time. Maybe there's an argument yeah. going on. No, everybody got strong views. But yeah. we want the MC, the host, to, to be yeah. upfront. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of the good things. This is called the Automix feature. Yeah. Right. Okay, right, yeah, this one, auto mix. Okay. Okay, so yeah. let's turn off. Hi and hi, lah, bro. Can I? Okay, okay, let's la. do that, lah. Okay, so okay. recording, simple. Simple. Mm. Yeah, again, when you heard of the word recording, everybody got scared. Oh, recording, lah, panic, right? So this one is very simple. You just press the record button, boom, it records everything, mm -hmm. all independent channels. That's it. So That's you can it. take the stand file, right. put it to your uh, computer, mm -hmm. or even take this and straight away you can mix whatever that you need to, or you'll do your own mastering. Yeah. Settle. Correct. And not only that, like uh, for the headphones, so you have four independent headphones, yeah. and the headphone, the, the levels can be just controlled over here. You can see these nice knobs here, the pink, yellow, green, blue, can just connect, can just control by just turning the knobs here. 
Mm. Yeah, so it's very easy to use. And uh, I think I think later on we have uh, we right now we have actually another unit over there another station another station over there. Feel free to go over there, play with it. We have some headphones, got some microphones there. Plug in and see how it works. Don't be afraid, just press buttons, right? Right, right, Mike. Mike, yeah. do you have anything to share with us on the PowerPoint slides? Oh, uh, okay. Other than this, well, see, we talked so much, Andy, we forgot about PowerPoint. This is one thing I like about this because mm. sometimes when we have a guest, a special guest, mm. you can't turn back the clock. Once you are on this mixer, if anything goes wrong, there's no turning back, right? For example, I already invited somebody from overseas, and this is a very important podcast that I will be, you know, showcasing on that that moment. But however, if let's say for example, anything goes wrong. All the audio will be gone, right? So what I would advise is basically you can record simultaneously on this device. Meanwhile, I can take the USB out, goes to your com, and record it as well. So you have a backup plan. Just in case anything happens here, you still have. So you can record simultaneously here as well as on your com. All right. And also on the other thing that I would like to share that, for example, there's some people who actually works very closely with a Zoom uh, conference uh, application, for example. This works very nicely, so you don't have to worry about uh, connectivity. There are still some mixers that are still in the progress of uh, you know, finalizing to actually work with many channels. Many of this mixer allows you to work with only like left and right channel to go through your Zoom. Mm -hmm. And then the moment you put like three and four inputs, they will just cannot adapt to that 3.4 yeah, input. Correct. So with this mixer, it allows you to have all independent channel without worrying that you can still control and go straight to your Zoom communication software. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even any other software. So even now, if we're doing it live, basically we can tap this to the main mixer and so on. So it's very complex for those who want a little bit more flexibility. This is like the way to go. Yeah, correct. So you heard from Mike. Mike's been professional. He's been doing this for the longest time. Uh, myself, uh, I only started content creation like in 2013 more on music, but more recently, I'm exploring a lot of other avenues as well. So I wish that this mixer would actually, well, if I have discovered this back then, uh, it would save me a lot of trouble. So for the users who just want to plug, I just want to do content. I understand content creators, you're creative, you know, you have your niche. You don't want to spend so much time dabbling with no technical stuff. This is definitely something you can consider. Very user-friendly for all skill levels. So I got a question from the yeah, uh, sure. influencer over mm -hmm. here. So basically he asked whether there's an interface. Of course, this of course. is basically it's an audio interface. Mm -hmm other than just a traditional so-called digital mixer. Mm -hmm. So it also works as an audio interface, so it recognizes all the channels. Mm -hmm. And when again, when you put into your DAW, like Logic and yeah. stuff like that, mm -hmm. you, you can see all the different tracks or different yeah, channels correct. independently. No yeah, worries. You can do that. Correct. So, Mike, do you have anything else to share with us on your PowerPoint slides? Uh, I think that's a, most of it, because mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, I don't want to go through, again, your specs yeah. and all that. I want to make it simple. <laughs> Thanks, huh? Thanks, huh? Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, it works. Everything works. Yeah. It works, huh? It works, it works. Dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, it makes us easy for us to uh, explain in that, that form of uh, practical. So, if you mm -hmm. want to know more exactly what basically this mixer is all about, yeah. uh, we, we have another station over there. So, not to worry. Yeah. Um, but you know, because generally what I would see that is, is basically when you connect different microphones, I'm sure some of you will understand this. For those who plug microphone to a mixer, you'll start to tweak. The yeah, EQs. Tweet, you start there. to tweet again. Same. When we do here, when we started to use the uh, way connect for our show today, uh, the presentation on the wireless mic, again, we start to have feedback. We start to have, uh, which frequency should we cut off? Which frequency yeah. to, to, to gain? Right. And not only that, how much gain do I need to put? There's always a gain structure. Mm -hmm. But none of us will know unless you're a sound engineer to understand what is gain structure, right? So again, this is very complex. But uh, this one, you don't have to worry. Simple. You still can have that, that kind of sound engineering kind of works where basically you can still adjust mm -hmm. how much EQs you want, how much uh, definition of your gain structure. Meanwhile, for those who just basically, I don't want to worry about all that. Plug and go. Plug and go. Yeah. Easy mode is the way to go. Yeah. So generally, that's a mixer that tailors for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Well said, Mike. So uh, I think currently we are also taking pre-orders for the DLZ yep. creator. I think if you, right now, if you do put in a pre-order, uh, we are also giving in some freebies and you probably, I think you're going to get a Mackie EN89D microphone oh, so when you pre-order now. Ooh. That means you order, there's a discount plus yeah, we're going to throw in a Mackie EM89D. So yeah. if you want to find out more on how you can purchase uh, this mixer, do approach some of our sales staff, they'll be more than happy to assist okay. you. Okay, so we are running a promo now mm -hmm. uh, today and tomorrow. So our retail price is $1,300. Wow, okay. But Today, for today and tomorrow, we're having a promotion at 1170. Mm -hmm. Only for these. Uh, days ah. Yeah, these only these two days. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So, do we have any questions from uh, anyone regarding the DLZ creator? Don't have, huh? 
Don't have a then we can. Wow, okay, okay, okay. Huh? Hey, don't have a no, no question. Uh, you don't give chance. <laughs> ask him question. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, anyway, okay. So we're gonna wrap it up. So DLZ Creator is currently available. Okay. This is uh, basically the official launch of the DLZ Creator. Uh, if you want to get a copy of this. DLZ Creator, uh, you can go over there and try it out. We have one there. Then if you want to purchase one, just uh, assist, uh, approach any one of our sales staff. Okay. Uh, lastly, we are, because we have a lucky draw that's going to be drawn tomorrow. Really? Uh, yeah. So don't forget to sign up uh, when you come in. Because you know, if yeah. not, please do so. Because the, we have uh, amazing prizes to give away. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, from Sure, we have from Auto Technica, a nice range of products, a lot of products that we're yeah. going to give away. They are, and they are not like... You know, you know, you know, entry yeah. level. They are really nice yeah. things. They are going to be giving away to to all of you. So if you don't want, it's okay. I can take them back. Yeah, uh, yeah you don't uh, put up uh, there. We will just back all okay. the thing, lah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway, uh, thank you guys so much. I'm Lino, aka Special Junkie, and Mike here from City Music. Okay, thank you guys so much for attending. Thank you.
uh, representing to you today for marketing. So just want to check with you guys, uh, are we live? We good to go? Okay. Then I need to um, introduce you guys to this wonderful lady over here. She is a professional videographer, also a professional gimbal operator. Go to Yun. Yes, hi guys. <laughs> yeah, welcome. So today we have a lot of exciting things to show you guys. Uh, and of course, we would like to share a little bit of experience from someone in the field who actually uses the products. So how many of you guys have actually heard of Tzu Yun? As in the, the brand, not, not her. Uh, not me. <laughs> Oh yeah, hands up again. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve thousand of you guys. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Yeah, so today we actually have got a lot of exciting stuff to show you guys because as of oh, hi, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining the stream. <laughs> there, there are seats in front here for latecomers. No, I'm just kidding, you can just sit over here. There's some seats in front. Uh, get us a comfortable. Uh, but pay very close attention to what's happening on the ground because Jane, what's happening today? Today, we're going to be showing some very small and very cute lights, like mm -hmm. me, but very powerful <laughs> Syrian lights from the Mola so series. <laughs> <laughs> We've got yes. a few things to show you guys. We have five ray series. We've also got the Mola series. Now, actually, if you've been paying attention, there are actually lights by Tian surrounding you. Well, the front part only. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've got uh, Mola's X100 over there acting as a key light. We have another X100 over here acting as a top down light. And we have the very cute G60, almost unnoticeable. Very, very small and tiny. Later on, you guys will have a chance and opportunity to hold on to it, but don't bring it home. Just hold on to it and feel the weight, all right? So of course, we do have something else that's very special. Check this out. Okay, so this, uh, for those of you guys watching the stream at home, too bad. For those of you guys who are here, you guys might have a chance to win one of these today. Right here, right now, no, at the end, okay? So pay close attention. If you guys want to take notes, that would be great. If you want to take photos, that would be great. But let me know so I can, both of us can put our best features forward. But otherwise, one of these can be yours, all right? Uh, not for every one of you. Just <laughs> one lucky winner, all right? So without further ado, let's present you guys into the world of Tune, all right? Again, not her world. The world Tune. Okay. So Tune has actually been around for quite some time, since 2015 with the gimbals, all right? So I think uh, for those of you guys who came in earlier, just now Claudio gave a talk on uh, how to work with Sony FX cameras. Oh dear, drop test. Yeah, we actually have got a gimbal up in front, the Crane M3S, we just, we just uh, saw its release a couple of weeks ago, I think. And uh, some of you guys actually are using the Crane M3S. I think some of you guys already have one unit in your hand. Can I see a show of hands? How many of you guys actually own one? Don't be shy, don't be shy. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. I don't know why, you know, people always tend to be very shy when they get spotted out, you know. Yeah, so we do have the, the gimbal market uh, as one of our strongest points, you know, in terms of uh, the business. But that was in 2015. But in 2022, Tuyun actually entered the lighting market. So we are not exactly old or anything. We are still quite young, but we are making a lot of waves. And I think uh, a lot of you guys, especially the streamers here, you might have seen Tuyun lights everywhere, right? So back in 2022, as early as March or May, uh, the 5 ray fr F-R100C made a landfall. And uh, Tune, have you tried this one yet? Yeah, this yeah. light is uh, actually really good for highlighting a lot of things, mm -hmm. giving a lot of color, especially for a lot of streamers. So mm -hmm. you can like uh, accent certain things in your background. So your background looks a lot more interesting. <laughs> Sorry, I think some people cannot see me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. Oh, yeah. what a big difference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All 5 cm difference. Okay, you good? Yeah. You good? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't fall. Uh. Okay, yeah. so the f 100 c was quite uh, popular among creators, but after that, you know, because uh, the, the market, okay, people who use them actually give a lot of feedback. Now, this is a very important story to share with you guys because Tune is a company that actually listens to the customer base. You know, things like forums, being, uh, feedback from the KOLs or the influencers, or even creators like you and I, they actually listen to all this feedback and Upon hearing all this feedback, they improve on the product. So like what Tune said, she already tried the fr c and there were some very, very useful creative works that you can actually create them with. But fast forward to December 2022, we saw the F100, which of course we do have one unit here. You guys can take a look at it later. In fact, I think we have two units here. Yeah, so you guys can take a look at it later. This is our RGB offering. It is very, very popular among creators from YouTube, Twitch, uh, TikTok, um, 
Facebook Live, where we are right now, YouTube again uh, with uh, Shorts and uh, IG Reels. So a lot of creators have actually found a lot of uh, use for the 5Ray F100. And then like, just now, I think some of you guys did see a preview of the M40, this little guy right over here. Now this one here, I like to call Tuyun's Chili Padi. You know what's Chili Padi? Small but fierce, small but powerful. So 40 watts, I mean like, Tuyun, take a look at this. Yeah, can you turn it on? Uh, it's as big as a hand, yeah? Let's turn it on and see how powerful it is. There we go, 40 watts. Last at you guys. Yeah. It's really bright. Yeah. Zero point three meters is actually rated at fourteen so thousand max. bucks. Yeah, this is the max. Yeah, this is yeah. the max. Mm -hmm. Kind of as big as my face. <laughs> yeah. It's really massive, and the thing is, it does come in a small package, but it creates mighty things. I think some of you guys have actually tried the M40 here because uh, some of the streamers have actually used it as the key light for your live streaming purposes. Uh, even TikTokers have actually started using it because it is so small and lightweight. And I think one of the coolest thing about this guy here is that you can open up this stand over here. So you can actually hold it like this or even mount it on a light stand, okay? I mean, very, very careful here because there's a very expensive looking console on my right. Um, I'm trying not to drop it because this part here is hard metal, okay? So this is very, very good for putting on light stands, making sure that your light remains stable. The cool thing about this is that a lot of you guys have actually moved on to type C cables. You know, it's more convenient, right? So we actually have this with type C. In fact, right over there, I know the console is turned off right now, but City Music actually has their mobile card. They do have a mobile card there with a microphone, with a camera, a laptop, a headset, and the Tune M40. So it's connected by Type-C, you can actually power it indefinitely. So you can actually use this as your key light as well for all your content creation purposes. So, moving on. These are the two, two main points, two main products that came out December 2022, which took the world by storm. A lot of people were actually very surprised at what these products can do. Later on, I'll take out the F100 and you can see all the various features on it as well. All right, so let's talk about the 5-ray M40, all right? Output of power is 40 watts and at 0 0.3 meters, this guy, though small, it's tiny but mighty, can be powered up to 14,000 lux, which is equivalent to 14,000 candles. So this is super bright. Uh, normally, based on experience, a lot of creators who use it, they don't push it to 100%. They always go like, hmm, 30% is actually really bright already. Okay, let me just show you, All right? Seeing is believing. This is 30%. I mean, put my face. Do I, do I look better now? <laughs> Handsome. Yeah, she, she looks really good, right? right? So 30% is already this bright. And if you were to push it to 100%, it can go even brighter, All right? So a lot of people actually use it with the diffuser and they just push it to about 10 to 20% for live streaming purposes because you know, they want to have a nice bokeh, mm -hmm. so they compensate with a wide aperture and all that. But this is really great. Yeah, and the guy in front is getting blasted by the Oh, light. I'm so sorry, so, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so, so you bright. can tell it's very bright, yeah. right? There we go, see, he's nodding his head. I <laughs> totally did not pay him to say good things here, all right? So it's really, really bright. But this is with the silicon diffuser, but you can actually take it out. You can see that it is actually all LEDs. All right, so most LED lights in the market, okay, um, are pretty good, but this one is way powerful. You know, it is, it is really incredible that they managed to pack in something so tiny with so much power and features. So this is, of course, bicolor, right? And it's very, very lightweight. You can actually put it in your pocket easily. Yeah, just turn it off and say, yeah, there you go. So this is a bicolor. You can actually switch between colors, right? <laughs> and of course, I'm so sorry. That's like, okay, That's but you look good. But you look good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But if you notice, right, you notice some of you guys actually commented before the show just now that when you look at the M40, there are vents behind. Mm. So what are, what are these vents for actually? So the vents are for fan cooling. Uh, it has a very good uh, heat dissipation technology mm -hmm. so that this light won't overheat. You don't have to worry about that, especially in Singapore weather. Oh, so especially like the a, weather these days. Huh? Yeah, mm. it's a really, really good thing to have. Correct. I mean, uh, you wouldn't actually use the fan to cool yourself down, but the right. fan is powerful enough to keep the light functioning at 100% capacity. Despite it being so hot, it can still run cool, all right? So the Dynafor cooling technology is something that is unique to Tune lighting. Across the board, all Tune lights, past, present, and future, they actually host this Dynafor cooling technology, which is very interesting, okay? <clears throat> very important to take note of now. Totally not for the lucky draw later. I mean, the contest giveaway later. But the Dynafort cooling technology is actually made in such a way that it understands how you move the light. Okay, now remember, Tian was or is still known as a gimbal company, yes? 
So a gimbal company, what does it have? Like stability, right? Like yeah. you put the camera, then the, that was a very like a bad head impression like that, for gimbal. You know? <laughs> yeah, like a chicken, chicken head. I should have brought live chicken here, but we are not allowed to. Yeah, City Music say no animals allowed inside, so cannot. But uh, basically, when you move a gimbal, all right, the camera stays put, all right. So in this case, Dynafor Cooling Technology understands your angle of attack. Sounds like Air Force terminology, right? Well. This is very, very important to remember. Huh? So when you tilt up or down, the fan actually rotates differently in a sense that it actually understands your angle of use. Right? So when this happens, when you tilt up or down, the fan actually rotates in a slightly different manner than the usual, okay? and it will draw the cool air and still push the hot air at the top part where the fan is supposed to be pushing, or rather the light is hitting in terms of direction. Okay? So if you notice the top part here, there's actually vents for airflow, all right? The back, definitely one big one over here. And at the bottom, there's one more over here as well. So the fans are able to push hot air. You all remember science last time, primary three? Uh, you're smiling already, you all remember? Hot air rises. Okay, very good A star for all of you. Okay, good job. All right, so hot air rises, so the fan works in such a way that the hot air will always go by the top. Meaning to say that it reduces the amount of turbulence inside to keep the unit inside cool, which means that electronics parts, it will be able to last longer, uh, able to operate fully at 100% without any fluctuation, fluctuations in uh, performance. So if you have light solutions that do not have this kind of fan solutions, and if you run really hot and you run it perpetually, you may actually encounter the lights um, showing signs of throttling. Then after that, all start flickering, correct or not? Yeah. yeah, so this one doesn't do that, okay? And on top of that, this is really cool, all right? You can actually use this to just place it like that. So you have your own built-in stand, all right? So the NFR cooling technology is something that is available across the board with all the tuning lights to ensure longevity of the product itself, all right? So color temperature being a bi-color light, you actually run from 2700K to 6200K, which is great for daylight temperature. If you can push to 5500K for all forms of content creation, Brightness adjustment range, very important. Okay, we have the hallmark set to like between one to 100%. So at 1%, you can still see how bright it is. But later I'll show you something that's even cooler with one of the other lights, all right? How bright 1% can really be. Just for your information, that light over there, even though it's hitting here to give a bit of a lighting for our hair light, it is actually at 17%. This one here is only at 31%. Yeah, it's not at 100% yet. If 100%, then after that, the folks behind the camera, people will be like, man, it's overexposed again, <laughs> need to adjust, okay? Uh, special shout out to Blackmagic Camera for providing the cameras, really good cameras. You guys can take a look at the uh, products later on as well. Yeah, okay? So we also have a CRI rating. So for those of you guys who are very curious about the capabilities of tune lights, all of tune lights actually hit the right parameters required by the industry for CRI and TLCR rating. Why is this very important? So you get color accuracy in your mm. footage, especially uh, if you use a lot of different lights and then the color doesn't match, it's very hard to grade after that. So mm. CRI rating is actually very important to keep your lights consistent across the board. Yeah, and most important thing is that for those of you guys who actually do shoot outdoors, uh, the reason why we actually look at CRI rating is because CRI rating determines whether your skin color is uh, able to remain how it's supposed to look like, okay? Case in point number one, if you have a light with very bad CRI rating, there's a high possibility that you look like one of those creatures from Avatar. Yes, okay, blue color, it does happen, okay? Or you have a lot of difficulty, like what she said, with color grading, because the colors that you see on screen is not reflective of what you see in real life. Okay, so it's very important to actually take note that CRI rating minimum should be 95 and above, right? So for the M40, it's at 96 and above, which is really good. For TLCI, it's basically the understanding of how cameras see uh, colors on a television screen, for example. All right, so anything that you see there, it needs to be of a certain level, otherwise the color grader will have a lot of difficulties. If you guys are interested to hear all this nerdy talk, you can come to my workshop next time, okay? But I will not bore you guys with all the technical details here today. So there are two internal batteries inside that allows the light to actually run for one hour, 37 minutes at 10 watts. Meaning to say, if you're running at 25%, which is ideal for a lot of portrait works, you can actually run it for one hour, 37 minutes without having any power bank connected to it. Because sometimes all we need is just a little bit of light just to do your shoot. Oh, oops, did I touch something? Okay. So runtime with max power at 100%, it can go up to 29 minutes, but 
if you have a Type-C cable connected to a power bank, you can actually still run it perpetually as long as you have juice inside a power bank. Like for example, during the other day, you did a shoot and then you carry the power bank, but it was just as an emergency, right? Yeah. Yeah, so but at the end of the day, she was like, actually, no need, because the battery actually lasts quite long as well, because she doesn't actually push at 100% when she does the shoot. Uh, a lot of creators actually who use for maybe your uh, first key light, okay, for your live streaming, they actually go about 20%. So even if you don't want to connect to a cable, it can actually last for as long as you know, your, your stream. Right? If it's like one hour plus, you can still have the light powering up all the way. Okay? I know some streamers go beyond two hours and then after that, the next day, go to work like that. <laughs> totally not talking about myself, honest. Oh. Yeah, I have a very, very good one. That's After one hour, I always sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I've never done a subathon before. Yeah, so anyway, uh, power supply, it does support PD fast charging, so you can actually power it up immediately, like within one hour, 15 minutes, but that was from zero to 100%. Okay, if you have a PD 3.0, you can actually use it while charging as well, all right? I like that's a nice music playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> totally no copyright strike, right? <laughs> So operation temps is between minus 10 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius. So like what she said just now, Singapore is super hot. All right? So the fans actually work over time, especially when you hit certain thresholds, uh, which is very important to, to note also. The noise level is actually quite little. So for those of you guys who actually do it for uh, do videography and require a uh, lighting solution for interviews, audio is super important. Right? So it is also very important to take note that even though the fan it looks very really big, it's actually about this size. All right? it is actually capable of running at 100% quietly. Right? Of course, if you put near your ear, it will be very loud. Lah. But on the shoot, uh, normally we don't actually pick up the sound even with a condenser mic. All right? So this is actually something very really good. All right? So moving on. Uh, this one I must dig out okay? because it's right over here. The case is quite big. This is not one of the instruments that City Music sells. Okay? This is not a violin or a guitar. But there is actually a light inside, okay? So I'm doing a live unboxing now. This is one of those things that they'll go to the Changi Airport, they'll scan you, they have that, no, I'm just kidding, this is. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like one, okay? It does come with a white color or a black color also. So this one is the black color version. Both run the same, it's just that aesthetics, okay? Some people, they like the eye, uh, apple color, white. Some people like the black color, like Darth Vader, okay? So, this is actually the barn door, all right? So you just run through quickly, all right? So you notice that there's actually a diffuse panel right in front. Okay, this is very important because straight out of the box, there is actually a diffusion panel that allows you to diffuse the light, all right? So we have a lovely model over here, coincidentally. All right, so I'm just gonna power it up right now, okay? So, oh, sorry, it's in RGB mode. Okay, so I wanted to surprise you all. Oh. Yeah, it's purple. Okay, so right now, this is CCT mode or color correlated mode, all right? So you can see that uh, the light is actually shining at 3,800K. I can just jump over across all the way to daylight and you can see now at 5,500K, it looks really good. So straight out of the box, it looks really smooth, all right? N not, not the model, the, as in the lighting, <laughs> all right? But her complexion <laughs> helps also, la, all right? Oh, that was an insult. <laughs> I tried, I'm so sorry. Okay, just kidding, okay? So this light is actually very good for interview shots or even like, for those of you guys who have done videography before, it looks just like, Ooh, that was bright. Now I know how you yes. feel. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me bring it down to uh, something a little bit more manageable. Okay. So this is 2%. Oh, some of you guys are quite impressed already. 2% so bright. Ah. Yes. Brighter than my future. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is really bright at 2%. Okay, I'm not kidding you guys. Later you all can take a look. At 2%, this is how bright it is. Okay. And the most beautiful thing about this, oh, now it's 1%. Totally not an accident when I turn, okay? So now it's at 1%, you can see it's still quite bright, all right? So this is actually rated at 100 watts, and just like that, you can see that at 100%, okay? I'm actually pushing it this much right now, very bright, but there's a special mode, there's a booster mode, okay? So if I press the top button here, this is 21,000 lux. So that's equivalent to 21,000 candles, all right? Look at oh. how far it can go, look at behind. See? <laughs> so the poor... The, the camera crew at the, the back The poor room. camera crew. Like, oh, man, it's not again. Yeah, but this is incredible, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's hitting really far, actually. Mm -hmm. It's like, what, three meters? Two? <laughs> your, your two from two meters. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> like you can still see the effect three on meters, the back. Three meters, this one cannot, math cannot. Really. Yeah, sorry, yeah, my gauge is very bad. Yeah, yeah so it's like actually very strong. Like. It could be three meters. Uh, I, I take that back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really incredible. As far mm -hmm. as lighting goes, 
100 watts at 21,000 lux at this weight. It is below 1 kg, right, at 950 grams, which is equivalent to about seven chickens, maybe. <laughs> I know, I saw, I saw at, uh, what do you call that, the NTC, they did, uh, the weight of chicken is about 150 grams per pack or something like that. I don't know why that's stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm thinking this is equivalent to about seven or eight chickens from NTC. Right. Anyone from NTC here can confirm? No, uh, okay, just, just, just double checking. All right, but if you notice at the back here, there's also the Dynafog cooling technology. But this time the fans are really small, there's six of them. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Six fans. Ah, 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 ah. How many of you all remember that reference? Okay, lah. Hey, Team Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we actually have got six mini fans behind here that runs really cool. And this is something that she actually commented as well because that time when we were doing the shoot, uh, we actually had a shotgun mic right in front and this light was used as uh, the hair light. It was virtually quiet, right? Yeah. So I think that's the same with all the screen lights. There's kind of like no sound. You can't really hear the fan sound unless you put your ear like really up close to it. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean like anything, if you put that close, you can hear. But there's really no sound that will actually affect your speaking audio if you're going to be using this on set. Correct. Okay, so the other cool thing about this light is that apart from CCT, which is uh, your bicolor light for cool and warm temperature lighting. Okay, so I'll be very nice. I'll bring it down to 1%. Okay, this guy's like... I brought sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why I have sunglasses wherever I go. Okay, so the cool thing about this light is that it also has got other functions. Like now, this is called TV mode. There'll be a bit of a flicker if you notice. So if you were to create uh, creative content, all right, maybe you want to create a short film or even a, a, a feature film someday, all right, or even like create a short vlog. Right, you can actually make people think that you're watching the TV, but actually you're not. You're facing the camera, and this is right in front of you. You can see the flicker like how it is on the TV channel. And you can scroll through, and you have a lot of other samples as well. Like For example, look at her now. She is standing in front of a candle. Right? The light flickers a little bit, just like how a candle would. And you can scroll again, and then you have lightning. Very, very frightening. I don't know the rest of the lyrics of that song. <laughs> yeah, so we have campfire as well, so you can you know, um, tell ghost stories from Tekong. Specifically Tekong, because that's all Singapore has for now for ghost stories. Yeah, the Bedok one like gone already. Eh? No more. I don't know what happened. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Ish Ishun doesn't have ghosts. Ishun got a different story one. <laughs> <laughs> that one we cannot talk about live on air. Yeah. So otherwise we all appear on my other ship. Okay. So anyway, uh, we also have got uh, other effects as well. Yeah. So you can actually do something cool like this. Okay. You can also have something like this. This is one of my favorite. Okay. This is why we actually have lighting workshops sometimes because we actually talk, talk about how lighting can break down light into different colors. Do you all know that white light is actually, when you go through prism, it goes to rainbow colors? It's like white light, boom, bleh, all, all the rainbow color puke come out, you know? Which is very cool, right? So this is actually something really cool. If you notice that if I were to light up her face now, it looks pretty white, right? But if I were to, let's see if I can find something shiny. Okay, how about this? You notice that now the reflective parts actually look rainbowish? So that actually presents a very interesting thing for photography or even videography. Yeah, Rick, oh, you didn't know about that, right? Yeah. See, come for my class, <laughs> worth it. Mm. I used to be a teacher, so yeah, okay, anyway, that all another story. All right, so we actually have got other modes as well. You can play around, yeah? I'm a Luke Skywalker now. <laughs> okay, Miss Windu. <laughs> okay, so you can actually switch around. So of course, this is still at 10%, by the way. So I can actually increase it all the way to 100%. Okay, that's a very bad example because it's more, more, more tiny. But if I were to show something, yeah, look at that, it's bright. Okay? Yeah. So you can actually use this to create a lot of different kinds of content. Now, a lot of people used to go with um, color gels back in the past. How many of you guys used to do that? Color gels. You all remember those things? I feel very old suddenly. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. One or two hands. Thank you. We're all from the same age range, right? Fill up survey form, same category. Yeah, so this is actually very convenient. If you were to use this instead of color gels, you don't have to pack color gels anymore. You actually have a light source that actually can change color. RGB, if you use, how many of you guys are gamers here? Gamers, gamers, hands up. Don't be shy, you're confirmed. Oh, Valorant players here one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, I accidentally touched it. Huh? Excited, excited. Yeah, ex excited. Yeah, I see a lot of hands up. Okay, trust me on this. You buy this, uh, your FP, uh, your kills uh, would be a lot better. Your KDA better. <laughs> because RGB is very good for FPS and skill ratio. It's true, right? Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tangos can confirm one. <laughs> all right, so this is... Please don't quote me, okay? When you join esports teams and all that, don't say... Mizami say one, huh? 
Yeah, okay, so let's move on. Okay, so HSI mode, meaning to see the RGB mode actually has got uh, 148 RGB diodes, peaking power at 30 watts, all right? Even though it's at 30 watts, it is still bright enough. But of course, if you want the 100 watts, you have to go into the bi-color mode, all right? Color temperature between 2700K to 6500K, so it's still accurate right down to the, the, the color temperatures. Uh, there are actually six batteries inside. Now, this is very important, okay? These six batteries do not add up to a point beyond 20,000 mAh. Okay, I'm, assu I'm, I'm assuming most airports are still holding on to this rule, all right? Because most airports, when it comes to batteries, it cannot be above 20,000 mAh. Otherwise, you cannot take it on carry-on, all right? So far, for all of June lights, including the Mollus and the G60, all right, I have actually carried them inside a small bag for my travels. No one has stopped me. Everything is A-OK. -okay. The only time I got stopped is when someone asked me, like, can you show me how it works? I'm not kidding you, okay? The T TSA, is it? Uh, some, someone was actually asking me like, hey, how does it work? Because he's a photographer, so he's just very intrigued. Because he didn't expect this guy over here especially to be 100 watts. It's insane, okay? Later we'll show you how the X100 actually looks like. So the brightness adjustment range will be between 0 to 100%. Again, CRI and TLCR rating is in accordance to industry parameters. And you can actually, this time around, you can charge it, okay, with two options. Okay, maybe I'll go with the top-down camera so you guys can see. Yay. Automatic. This one very cool. Huh? I, it's voice activated. Yeah. I don't have to press buttons. It just works. It's amazing. So if you notice, there are actually... All I see is my hand. <laughs> there are actually... You guys can see, right? There's a Type-C cable port and there's also a DC standard port. So you can actually power it up by two ways and you can actually charge it by two ways as well. Again, you can still power it and still use it at the same time. All right? So operation times also between minus 10 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius. Now, the 5 ray F100 actually comes with a combo kit. So the combo kit not only just comes with a one door, but it also has got this nice, beautiful case, all right? And on top of that, inside the case, you actually can see this amazing manual, which I'm sure all of you will read, right? I, 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 I have yet to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have got this eight crit, okay? Eight crit grid, all right? So an eight crit grid is, um, just not talk about chickens, not talk about eggs, right? Yeah, so now you actually see this AK grid right here, right? So this goes over the sleeve and you can actually use this to direct your light better. So the light will not spill everywhere, all right? I would love to show you guys how it works, but because we are pressed for time, I will try my best to do this at another workshop perhaps someday, all right? But it also comes with something very, very cool as well. This is, it's not a shower cap from the bathroom. <laughs> this is actually a diffusion sheet that you can wrap over the bundle so you can actually have softer light. So eventually, when you wrap it on, the entire bundle becomes a giant, well, not really giant, but a rectangular softbox. So it allows you to soften your light further, okay? So of course, this entire kit comes in together with, oops, did I move something? This entire kit comes together with a lot of very good accessories as well, all right? But I'm sure you guys are more excited about this. This is the future. Welcome to the Mollus series. So the model series just came out like last March, okay? And uh, it has taken the world by storm because of its size. So if we were to look at the X100, we have unboxing, yeah, unboxing time. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Um, can I shift this a little bit? I think it's possible. If you, if you break it, you pay for it. <laughs> I reach. Yeah, okay. okay, let's just... Maybe here, it's okay, so I have a bit of space. Okay, I'm gonna move this up a little bit, okay? All right, so, I'm gonna unbox it now. All right, so, first things first, let's look at the G60. Totally missed that part. Yeah. So the G60 is over here. Okay. You guys wanna see how tiny it is in my hand? This is it. This, Believe it or not, it's a COB light, okay? Let me just, yeah, there you go, 60 watt. That's how tiny it is. I know it looks big on the TV, right? I know it looks big on the TV, but it's actually really small and tiny. I mean, I look, look, look at it right now. This is a 60 watt light, and it's a game changer because it is small and tiny, but very, very powerful, right? Yeah, it's a literal cube, uh. it's really very small, like Rubik's Cube, right? Yeah, it looks like Rubik's Cube, right? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people actually see this as a toy. In fact, it's super light, okay? It is it's really, really light. And it does have the dynamic cooling technology again. You can see the vents here, you can see the fan inside as well. And this is actually able to be powered up by power bank as well, because there's actually a type C 
cable port inside over here. And you can actually use any power bank as long as the output is 18 watts and above. Also, this is something really cool. This is like a light detector. What? Yeah. You know why? Oh. Okay, so when I put a power bank on this device, every time you see those power banks on Facebook advertisements, are, this one is 100 watt. Wow. Bye. And after you connect it, eh? This thing is telling you that the output is only 25 watts. Why? Because there are four ports, and then the four ports actually 25, 25, 25, 25, equal to 100 watt. It's not 100 watt each port. So I call this a light detector. It's like, that time I bought a really <laughs> expensive power bank, 100 plus dollars, then it, it, it's not 100 watt. It was actually 25 watt for one port, then the rest is like 30 plus ish. Then I'm like, mm, more disappointed at my results than the PSLE grades that I had. You know, so I was like, damn, yeah. oh, can you see that? Yeah, so I was so upset, okay? I was really upset because, yeah, then eventually I got a better power bank. Uh, don't worry, we're not going to mention brands here, all right? Mm -hmm. And a good cable, very important. A good power cable actually matters as well. A lot of people think that a PD cable would just work, but there are actually different types of cables. So this is where you start to realize that there's something more interesting about electronics as well. Like for example, if you use a cheap cable, even though you have output of 100 watts, the cheap cable cannot have any tolerance above 20 watts. Then it will just carry 20 watts over. Then it will not be able to power to maximum potential. You can still power it up, but at about maybe 10 to 20%, which is not the 100% potential, it will tell you, it will blink on the screen, it will say your light, your, your power source is not up to 18 watts and above. Mm. Sorry, not up to 60 watts. So it cannot go to 100% max. Yes, mm. correct. Yeah. Are you muted? No, yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> Just checking, all right. So this light here, it is really incredible. At this size, you can use, a, you can use it for a lot of uh, applications, all right? So one thing I want to show you guys right now. Okay, I'll bring the light over. As close as I can, okay? So this is now at 17%, okay? Let's show how it goes at 100%. So I'm just gonna light it, uh, light that wall over there, okay? You can see that it's over there, if I turn it off, I have discovered the power of sound. All right, you guys can hear me now? Great. Okay, so now I need another hand. <laughs> can you help me hold this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, wow, I got two hands now. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, so now it's at 17%, and I can actually power it at 50%, and now at 100%. Look at how bright it can go. Okay? So this light here is really incredible. At this power range, you can actually see how bright it can go, right? All the way to the back. Sorry, guys, don't look into the light, okay? Yeah, don't look into the light. Don't look at the light. You need to. <laughs> yeah, but you can see how far the light can go, all right? So this is actually an incredible device. And this is 1%. You can still see the light actually hitting the panels above your heads. So at 1%, it is still quite powerful and the reach is quite strong. But for the purpose of this live stream broadcast, we have to set to 17%, where we have a nice, comfy light above our head, all right? And of course, you can control it, of course, by Bluetooth with the app. But uh, I did not set it up for this light because this light is not mine. This light is City Music, so thank you for actually letting us use their demo unit. But this light here is actually really, really powerful, okay? So this is at 17%, all right? And it's bi-color as well, which means you can actually power it according to whoop, another mic over here. All right, there we go. So brightness is adjustable between 1% to 100%, okay? You can leave it. Okay. <laughs> this is so weird. Okay, this is for you guys. So when you want to cheer and all that, all right? So CR rating and TLCR rating is still within the standards of industry parameters as well. And this is how bright it can go at one meter. Okay, it is actually up to 2,376 lux, all right? So of course, at one meter, it's further than 0 0.3 meters. So yeah, do the math. It gets less and less powerful in terms of intensity. But you can see at one meter, it is still able to hold its own against most others which are supposed to be brighter, all right? So app control is available by Bluetooth, as mentioned before. Um, then you also have the ability to power it up by PD or by direct power. So right behind here, there's actually a DC port. So live streamers actually like this because it's very small and compact, especially for people like myself who live in HDB flat where space is an issue, but you know, small space can do a lot of things, right? So this guy here, tiny but mighty, you can actually put it inside the light stands. I know you, 
<laughs> smiling right there. <laughs> okay, but this guy here, okay, um, Ilhami actually used this before for his stream. So he knows that this is actually really tiny and mighty. Still using? Excellent to hear, all right? Round of applause, round of applause. <laughs> One of our early adopters. Yeah, adopter sound like you got baby in case. Why does it sound, who chose that word, early adopter? Like, like, I don't know, start a family differently with equipment instead. Not wrong. Okay, but then, this guy here is so small and tiny, and it's so lightweight, you can really just stuff it uh, or even put it on a window grill. Like one of our, uh, one of the creators that we work with. You all know Mr. Brown? Hello, this is Kim Huat. He was number one to Yun fan. Okay, uh, he didn't say that, I'm just quoting him. In but he actually put one of these on a window grill. Do you know how difficult it is to put a COB light on a window grill traditionally? But this one is small and lightweight enough. All he has to do is just mount it on a clamp, or a super clamp rather, and clamp it on a window grill. And it's safe. In fact, I've seen a portrait of yourself. You did a self-portrait, right? And uh, you actually did a show. Oh, by the way, guys, if you haven't followed the Tune Fan Club, not her fan club, as in the Tune Fan Club uh, Instagram, you can actually see what she has done for her self-portrait shoot. So you actually did what again? Yeah, so I actually had the light. I stuck it outside my window. So it was hovering over, over the ledge. I was just like them praying the thing wouldn't drop because like it would be killer litter. <laughs> so, so I actually lit from outside the window and I shine it into my bedroom to kind of like simulate sunlight. Mm. So it was because it was so light, I could do that. And it was so easy to kind of just rig it and then like just throw it out the window to get like... No, not, not throw it out the window. Like, but I mean, throw it out the window, <laughs> we have a light stand, my boom stand. So I boomed mm. it out the window and then I shone it in. So because it was like such a light and portable good light and that it really... I think it was the only light I had that could actually like put it, like rig it out of the window, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. For, for me, traditionally, if I were to use my old COB light, right? Um, if I put it out there, I'll right, appear on Mothership, confirm. Yeah. Confirm. Either that or TikTok, you know, someone will zoom into my unit and go like, this guy has been putting heavy things outside his window. Oh no. Then you know that, that, that sound, right? The, <laughs> the text-to-speech sound, right? Sounds very robotic, eh? but now we're getting more and more natural sounding. Eh? Yeah, so, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't I recommend think. people do that all the time. La, so. yeah. But it is, it is very useful that you like, can actually have the yes. sun yes. outside yes. your window. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because typically we film people, we like to throw things outside doors and outside windows. Why, why do you always use the word throw? <laughs> yeah, like, okay, like we like to rig things outside of the there doors and windows so you get like really nice shadows and like nice lighting. Mm, mm. So that's what I tried to do with the serene lights and it was like, wow, really awesome to work with. Yep. And uh, one thing about the light, like she said, you know, because it's so lightweight and so compact, right? You can actually literally put it in most places that normal lights, traditional size lights cannot, right? So that actually is a game changer. Right, so operation times between minus 10 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius. Again, thanks to Dynafog cooling technology, it can still survive most hot places to shoot in. Right. So next, this one here is the one that actually recaptured the world by storm. How many of you guys have actually seen this on YouTube? How many of you guys actually won one right now? We're not doing a giveaway for this one, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, believe it or not, the X100. This is 100 watts. This, right here, is an Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max. You need to be very specific because now I've got how many, <laughs> 14, 15, yeah. all that, right? Yeah. But look at the size difference. It's virtually the same. And look at how slim it is, right? Look at how slim it is. This is still pocket-sized, right? And this is very incredible because this thing here actually can power up to 100 watts, right? Like that. That is, you can see this on, mounted on the back, on the, behind the softbox, yeah? So it's actually small and tiny, but really, really mighty, okay? Now, straight out of the box, I'm gonna take out the battery pack, okay? It does come with a battery pack, and this battery pack right here is very useful because um, there's an in-out Type-C port, which means in a pinch, if your phone runs out of battery, I can, start, I can still charge my phone with it, okay? So this is like a power bank, all right? And also because of the, the power rating, it is quite low compared to a huge power bank, you can still bring this on a plane. It's safe, okay? It's safe until you throw it at somebody. <laughs> that one different story, lah. Okay? But don't do that. Until okay? you drop it from the window. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, don't do that because it is a little bit of a heft. But there's a very good reason for it because there are actually batteries inside which allows you to actually power it up for quite some time as well. Right. So PD input power you can actually power it up to uh, minimum 18 watts. So underneath here, there's actually two ports. Okay, yeah, let me show you on the, the top down screen again. I gotta love technology, man. Voice activated. Wow, that's cool. All right. So there's Type C. 
and there's also your traditional DC unit, okay? But the X100 has got one additional power point, okay, or rather power source, which is the battery, of course. So this is actually um, their own proprietary port right here for the battery grip, okay? So if I were to mount up the battery grip, there you go. Now it feels like a Hasselblad camera, right? For those, for those who guys do photography, it doesn't like it, right? So now you can actually do a very awesome, but low-cost cosplay of a photographer. Yeah, because camera is too expensive, so this one better, <laughs> okay? So it does look like a bit like a camera. In fact, the button here also is right over here, but this is for the power indicator, lah, all right? But to power it on, okay, you just hold on the red button at the back, right here, and now strike, okay? Just power it up, this is 100%. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, so this is, this is really incredible. And let's see how bright it is at 1%. This is 1%. Look at above. Yeah. I'm just, just going to shine on you. There we go. Yeah. 1%. Okay. Now, because this is city music, can we have some music? Okay. There's a feature on the device itself. You press this down. You notice that it changes from CCT to music. Okay. So let's play some music right here. Something with a bit of like Trump, uh, tr Trump, trance, trance, <laughs> trance techno or something. This is, this, this, this is so romantic. <laughs> like, oh, uh, see, the light's not even being cooked. <laughs> Can we have uh, something a bit more? With more beat. Oomph, oomph, oomph. Louder, louder. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. is, is that how we do it? <laughs> we have real DJs in the house. I'm doing this, I look very silly. Yeah. <laughs> but this... Okay, I can't stop already. I don't have to kind of copyright strike, okay? Because so, <laughs> we are still streaming on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> Later after that, like, hey, what happened to the stream? Gone. Hey, how come I got a special email from Google? And uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, GG, all right? So this is actually really cool. There's actually a music mode. You don't actually need to have any drivers. It is on board. There's actually a microphone over here. So next time you go for, uh, I, I don't know, what, what's that thing called? What? Clubbing. Uh, clubbing. <laughs> He's so old. <laughs> wow. Clubbing. Yes, clubbing. Okay. So next time you go clubbing, we can actually do something like this. Ah, uh, test, 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 test. Yeah. Well, yeah. That was there's, the base one. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So you get the idea, okay? Yeah. So if you have a whole array of these, you can have like a very cool thing. And I think, uh, you know, we just want to give a special shout out to our friends who are actual DJs here. Soulbound is in the house. Yeah. Don't be pissed. It's okay. Don't be shy. Yep. They actually have experimented the lights and uh, with the music mode and it actually looks really cool with the, the sound effect. You know, it's, it's really like, it brings out the, the abingness in me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That time you played the techno, the Barbie girl. Uh, yeah, yeah. That one's a butterfly. But still, it's like letter B. La, different thing. <laughs> Nobody understands what kind of music I listen to anymore. <laughs> okay, so anyway. PD input for this guy here is 18 watts and above as well. Color temperature between 27 k to 6500K. Brightness adjustment, while you saw your sound, 1% to 100%. It is incredible, right? So CRR rating is between 95 and above, sorry, uh, from 95 and above. So we'll, it's fantastic for videography and cinematography as well. Uh, brightness at one meter is 3,881 lux, which is significantly higher than the, the rest of the lights by tune because this is 100 watts, right? So it's different. App control by Bluetooth. Okay, so I have here my phone. Wow, so many messages. Ah. <laughs> well, popular. It's on silent mode. No, I think I never pay bill. Okay, anyway. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, I have to double check later. <laughs> but you can see here, okay, so this is the app. All right. Let's show the top down screen again. Okay, good. So this is the app, all right. Press off. So this light is actually connected to my phone, all right. If I turn it on, it's on, all right. And I can slide the slider and look at that, it's warm. Now this is something really cool. Okay, we have this thing called CCT pair mode, which means I can actually match the light. Okay, you all can see, right? This light here to whatever I want to white balance it too. So in this case, that light is properly white balanced for this camera over here in front, okay? So I just point it up over here. Okay, maybe I'll just go over instead. So it's more like, oh, so real. Yeah. He didn't touch anything. See, my hands are not even touching anything. Okay? Whoa. So thank you for coming for my magic show. I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so this is actually something really cool. And for photographers or videographers who actually work in studios, I'm going to show you guys something even cooler. This is how you can set up your studio lights. All right. So I'm just going to mess around with it. All right. You can see that I can actually decide how my studio layout is going to be. All right. For the palm or for the palm of my hand, I can just drag and drop the light. Okay. Sorry, I have eczema, so it's a bit challenging to put. There you go. All right. Yeah. So dry skin now. Huh? Very bad. Okay. So you can actually control the light from your studio space without actually going over to the light itself, which means you do not actually need to run up and down. Your assistant can just sit down here with the phone and control the light accordingly, right? By pressing this button here, right? Which I didn't drag again. Okay, there you go. So select the light and make the adjustments. Okay, so this is super bright now. This is 100%. Just out, all along, it was at 31%. So this is something that's really incredible, all right? And the app is still going through a lot of changes. Like this is um, an app that's always constantly a work in progress. The engineers, in-house engineers are actually working on this. And, I, and I'll talk more about the app in a bit, but I just want to say that this app is very, very powerful. There are a lot more features coming in and they are always working on it. And the best part is it works on both iOS and Android, okay? So for the X100, okay, back to the slides. Oh, got delay. Okay, let's try it again. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Close. Almost got it. Like, nearly yeah. there. Ah, so nearly there, yeah, correct. So the power supply, you can actually use PD adapter, power adapter with a Type-C and the grip battery itself. And of course, again, that's just like all the tune lights, minus 10 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius for operation temps. Now, one thing cool about this light is that, including the G60 as well, they actually have got special accessories that come together with it. Like right now, you can see the mini reflector, right? So the mini reflector actually just like, just like most other reflectors out there in the market does allow you to intensify the light, which means that your lux value will be increased, okay, dramatically, all right? Without, the, without this um, reflector, okay, it will also disperse the light in all over the place. You can spill the light all over, okay? Don't worry, I'm not going to point at your face anymore. <laughs> he was like, not again, man. You can see the fear in his eyes, you know, like, wow. Already. After this, tonight, traumatized. He sleep, right? <laughs> see you. Not, not you, the, the light. <laughs> yeah, it's like, mention the brand. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, yeah? Okay, so this is at 50%. If I were to push it up to 100%, without the reflector, you can see how very intense the light is on that spot right there, right? But if I were to take this out, it's not so intense, but the light is spilling all over the place, all the way until there, all right? So this actually helps with reduction of the light, okay? Are, are you glad I'm pointing upwards? You look so <laughs> grateful. <laughs> okay, so this is incredible. And some of you guys may ask, all about the fans, when would they kick in? Just like all the tune lights, the fans will only kick in once it hits a certain threshold, yes. right? So like, for example, for our shoot that day, we actually had one situation where it got very warm for us, but the light still remains cool because once it hits a certain threshold, the fans just automatically kick in. Yeah, so this is something that's really awesome about this light, right? Okay, so other accessories also include, it's not your favorite, right? Yeah. Eh. <laughs> Yeah, sorry guys, it's I not my favorite. Like microphone, I'm very <laughs> excited. Because this is actually like a mini softbox stone yeah. thing. And okay, so how it opens, right? It's like this. Mm -hmm. And you just press. Wow, so cute. Yeah. So it's like a mini dome now, see? So yeah. you can just attach it to the. Right. I mean, this is one of the coolest oh, things about sorry. this device. Oh, yeah. You can push it down. Yeah. There's actually a grid here. The grid actually can be removed, all right? So you can take it out. This. For those of you guys who attend photography workshops and all that that, uh, that I run, you will actually see a lot of this in action because this light here, all right, this modifier here is super useful for a lot of things. Like for example, it can be used as hair light. I like how I'm just putting the modifier here. <laughs> hair light, okay? Yeah. So it actually works. Um, I'll actually use it right now so you guys can see how it works, right? And the fact that it has grids, you can actually take it out so you can actually show people why grids matter. Like mm -hmm. Tangos, you are a true believer of grid, right? I got you grid locked. <laughs> <laughs> waiting to use that line forever. Yeah, but yeah. Oh my gosh, the amount of... It was a very cold joke, right? Yeah, I know Singapore is not very hot, so... I hang out with you too much, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so jokes aside. Okay, let me just put this on. Okay. So, if I were to use this as a hair light, right, look at how wonderful this thing is. And this is handheld. Like, a lot of videographers actually like to use this handheld because they feel that it's, it's actually good enough for run and gun, okay? For, for run and gun, for those of you guys who missed it through the stream just now. Okay, look at that. As hair light, you can see that it separates her, and I can just hold this light handheld like that. It doesn't get hot, 
well, not hot enough to the point where I'd be like, ah, and I drop it, right? But even as a key light, you can see how smooth and beautiful the light is on her, okay? Yeah. So you smooth. go around, okay? Even, let's say, this light here, maybe act as a fill, you can see it, it's just, you know, really nice. It's nice, soft light. Now, for those of you guys who have actually um, spent some time with uh, learning about lighting and all that, you'll probably understand that large soft boxes normally create softer light, agree? But here, somehow, this small little mini soft box actually allows for some soft light in a pinch, which is great, right? So I always tell people, this is like the baby and that one's the mama. That's, this is the papa because <laughs> eat too much. Yeah, yeah, that's like the mom, right? And then this is the father, then this is like the baby. Like, what? Snow White and the three, wrong. Goldilocks and the three bears. <laughs> I put the three bears wrongly with the wrong fairy tale. Uh, I'm, I feel very old. Yeah, but that light over there is also by a tuning soft box, but you can see how small this is compared to that, but it's still capable of producing soft light, which is incredible. And one thing I like to do during my photography workshop is I just want to show a very simple example of how grids work. And this is actually a very good tool for teaching, all right? So for example, right now, let's blast it to 100%, okay? So this is, I'm going to attempt with uh, the same angle, all right? You can see that light only falls off until this part. And it's still quite soft. You can see my shadow. Look at that. Look at how beautiful my shadow is. Don't look at my skin. Look at my shadow. Now look back at me. Now look back at the shadow. <laughs> now look back at me again. Uh, so when I take out the grid, look what happens. Okay? The light spills everywhere. Okay? You can see it goes all the way until there. All right? As opposed to just being focused in one spot. So for creators who actually want to have a little bit more focus of the lighting on yourself and not light up your very messy bedroom, this is actually very useful because everything that you don't want people to see will be blacked out. Agree? So this is actually a very useful tool to have. Okay? And just now, Tyrion showed you how to deploy the mini softbox. Now she's going to show you how to close it. Yeah. It's my favorite thing to do. Yeah, she's been practicing for like days for today, for yeah. this. There you go. <laughs> and then you just Done. close it like that. So you there twist this part here. Okay. So this is how it opens, right? Yep. Yep. And then you twist this part here and then it close. And then so now, that's it. Yeah, so now, everybody, check under your seat. Check under your seat. For a mini softbox, we're going to have a competition. Who has the fastest timing for deployment? Uh, bluff you, I don't have. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> just want to see whether you all pay attention or not, that's all. <laughs> okay? <laughs> some people are like, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> that fellow was checking behind his friend's seat some more. <laughs> Got extra, no? <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> so uh, please don't, don't feedback to City Music. Hey, this guy is too lame already. No. Okay, it's all for fun. Okay? So the G60 does come in two packs. Uh, you can actually see it in some of the dealers or in some uh, major photography stores. Uh, you have the standard kit. You also have the combo kit. Okay? So the combo kit comes with french fries and upsize drink. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I felt that cringe. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> So the combo kit actually does have additional accessories as well. So it does have the mini softbox, which you saw just now. You also have your storage bag, uh, where, where it also houses the cables, as well as the quick start guide. And then there's also the dome diffusion kit, which is really awesome. So this is very, very cute. Okay, so check this out. Wait, wait, wait. I always like to do this. Huh? Wait. Because it's like a magic show. Okay, I tried. Oh, okay. I, I, I tried. I tried. It's supposed to be cool. It's supposed to be cool. Okay, I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. Okay. On the count of three, you blow. One, two, three. Oh, okay. A yeah. bit lag, but yeah. That's a bit of lag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. It was, it was <laughs> close. It was really close. But this is very compact and small and tiny, but it is amazing. Because if you actually light it up with this, okay? How much time do I have left? Oh, over time. <laughs> All right, we are almost done. Yeah. Just in case. Who's the next speaker? Are you, are you here? Okay, we, we good? We good? Okay, good. All right, so just now we had the mini softbox, right? But now we have the tiny little dome diffusion kit. Okay, so that's a bit too bright. So I'm just going to power it about 20%. Smooth. You like this a lot? Sold yeah. to the gentleman in white. <laughs> <laughs> For this amazing new dome diffusion unit. Yeah, but this is incredible. But wait, there's more. Okay, so this one is a small one because Chiyun believes in family sometimes, you know. So we have the baby, okay. All right, now we have the papa, okay. So I, no, I'm not going to do the baby. Thing, it's okay. All right, so this time around, you just go. Okay. 
Oh, like, wow, you sound like a magician. Wow. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so sad when the magician asks for clapping. <laughs> right, right. The only thing that disappeared is his sadness. Yeah. Okay, so we put this on. And now I want to show you guys how beautiful the light comes from this, this modifier right here. Okay? So watch this. Even without having one of those, just watch how soft the light will be on this dome diffuser. Look at that. So this is something that I really find very useful, especially if you don't have something like this. Okay, so this is a lantern, okay? This lantern is not for festivals, they are different lantern, okay? Some of you are thinking, hey, can I? No, okay? So this lantern here is meant for mounting on the Bowen's mount adapter, which we'll talk about later as well. But this one here can be used for top-down in a pinch if you have little space. So let's say if I were to turn off, okay, let me show you a quick sample. I'm going to turn off this light right here. Okay, now we have the top-down camera again, please. Thank you. So I'm going to put this right above and look at how soft the light is. Just like that. As a top-down light, it is very lightweight and it's still functional and adaptable to your space requirements. Okay, so even if you don't want to have this big lantern, okay, you can actually still use a small large dome diffuser, which is super incredible. And the best part is, once you're done, whoop, Packed and good to go. Some people giggling already. Why? It's ah? <laughs> <laughs> like, so funny, this one. No, it, it, it's just more compact. Okay, and on top of that, you can take it out. Okay. You can take it out for ease of keeping. All right. And it's made of silicone, so you can still wash it if it gets dirty. All right. So this is actually a very, very useful device for top-down shots and things like that. Okay, let's turn on the light. Okay, there we go. So this one, unfortunately, sell, is sold separately, all right? but the small dome diffusion does come together with the G60 combo kit. So the X100 does have a standard combo and pro set. Okay, the pro set, the only difference between the pro set and the combo set is that it does have the mini softbox. But the combo kits, just like for the G60 and the X100, does come with this. This is really huge. I mean, it's small in size, but in terms of usage, it's huge. All right? So this is actually very useful because if you already have existing softboxes at home that have Bowen's mount, this is actually a Bowen's mount adapter. So the flat one is for the G60, and the big size one, hey, live unboxing. Okay. So the X100 one actually has got one that's protruding. Now the reason why it's protruding is because for the X100, unlike the G60 where the front part is clean and flushed, the X100 front part actually has got vents in front, so the air still be pushed out, right? So this is something that's really remarkable in terms of engineering for the X100. You can see how small and tiny it is, but it's literally, I always joke with the student people, I always tell them this is actually a big fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like mostly fan, right? It's mostly a fan. Yeah. They just happen to have a light on top of it, that's all. <laughs> yeah, really, it's really a big fan. Oh, do you know there's actually a brand out there called Big Ass Fans? Yeah. I don't know why I said that, but it has nothing to do with my presentation, but I just want to share it with you all. Because I feel like you're all friends to me now. <laughs> okay, but this, <laughs> this fan here keeps it cool as well. All right, and the front part here is the COB light itself. Okay, COB means cheap on board. Okay, no, I'm serious. Cheap on board. <laughs> why laugh? Like cheap like C-H-I-P cheap, like, not. <laughs> yeah. No, I think you thought like oh. cheap like. Oh, C-H-I-P. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> just like the... My joke, he never laughed. No, then he laughed. <laughs> Laughing in his own. <laughs> joke. Okay, good job. All right, but that doesn't mean you might win the M40. Just letting you know, okay? So there is a fan inside that makes sure that the entire unit remains cool. The hot air goes from the top, the back, the front, and the bottom as well. And there's actually threads as well for you to mount onto your standard light stands, okay? So this is very, very awesome. Right, so moving on. Okay. We are not done yet, according to the PowerPoint slide. <laughs> but... This is the ZY Vega app, which I've been using right now. So it's developed in-house by Tune's research and development team, which is really great because it's not a third-party app, all right? And they have many years of experience creating apps, so they are always making sure that this app actually is uh, uh, useful and powerful and adaptable to any situation that you might face as a creator, all right? There's Bluetooth connectivity as well. Now, the reason why it's Bluetooth and not Wi-Fi is because sometimes in areas, Wi-Fi can be a problem. You know, Bluetooth, at least, you know, within 10 meters, you still have that secure lock-in uh, communication between your app and your device, all right? Available on both iOS and Android. We are friends with one another here, okay? There are custom presets, so if you have already done some settings, you can actually save them on your phone, and then when you go to a location, you can just load the presets, and you're ready, good to go, all right? 
CCT pairing, like what you saw, you saw the magic show, yeah? color balance all change, right? You can even save your setups, and there's always constant updates that make it better, okay? So be free and use the Model Series app, and this is how it looks like the interface. It looks really clean. This is actually the three months ago version, the latest version that's actually a lot more fun functions and features, which unfortunately I can't show you right now because it does hint what's to come soon as well. Okay, so Tune is always evolving. There's a lot of things that's happening. So, <clears throat> giveaway requirement number one. Everybody must scan the QR code and buy at least, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> go ahead, join the QR code, join the social media platforms, go and join the Facebook group because the Facebook group is where I'm gonna post the first question. And if you answer it, you might stand to win an M40, 5 free M40, okay? So stand by. Let me, let me go to the group first. Oh yeah, I need to accept requests as well, all right? Let's, let's do this, okay, let's do this. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm not admin on this phone. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, can, can we uh, blank out this screen temporarily? Is it blanked out? No, it's, I can still see the screen. Okay, there we go. Oh, look at that. So that's how I look like. Oh. I never watched my stream before. Oh, so you can see my face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to accept all of you guys. Oh, we are all friends now. Oh, I don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> do, do you need Wi-Fi? Uh, yes, let me just connect to this real quickly. Yeah. I know some of you guys love the blue and teal look, right? Yeah, so you can actually play around with the RGB lighting as well later on. Ori orange and teal, sorry. Or orange That's and what he meant. <laughs> Did I say blue and teal? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, City Music. Yes? yes? Okay. Oh, I love that password. <laughs> love it. Okay. All right, let's see. This has totally nothing to do with what I mentioned just now about the bills not being paid. It's just oh, I forgot to log into the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Good cover, good cover. Good cover. Yes, let's go. All right. All right, chat. I, I mean, guys. <laughs> I'm so used to streaming. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, technically, I'm still streaming now. So, chat, you're all tuning in right now. Um, so sorry you can't participate. It's only for people on the ground, okay? Okay, so let's see. Who has joined the group? I mean, I need to refresh, right? Uh, group, group. Uh, you see, I, I should follow City Music Singapore, you know? Yeah, I do. Yeah, Shout out to them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, remember, what? Oh, 13 people! 13 new friends. All right. 13 souls, all mine to grow. By three, they come. <laughs> Everyone played Diablo 4 yet? <laughs> yeah, some part. Okay, so first question. Okay, um, no one else joining, right? There was, there was uh, about 21,000 people joined, right? The top? Mm. Oh, 13. This page isn't available at the moment. Oh, high traffic, high traffic. High traffic, too popular. Okay, try, try again, try again. Uh, or you can just type facebook.com slash groups slash Tune fan club. Don't worry, it's not her fan club. It's the brand fan club, okay? Okay, so I'm going to post something and we have... Okay, wait, those of you trying to log in now, are you able to do so? Is it okay? I see some people nodding. Tango's good. Oh, oh, why? What happened? Okay, good. Good to go. Anna, let me, let me accept you. Huh? Okay. This poor guy, if he cannot participate, all that sacrifice being blinded by the light <laughs> is not going to help. Yeah. Okay, member request. Let's see now. Hey, I don't see your member request. Have you, have you joined in already? <laughs> the live? No, no, not the live. The Chiyun Fan Club. Uh, just go to the group, the group and join the group. Yeah. Because that's how we farm people. I mean, <laughs> that's how we grow communities. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> we good? Okay, anyone has trouble still? The URL? Oh, okay. Uh, Facebook.com slash groups slash Tuyun Fan Club. Z-H-I-Y-U-N-F-A-N-C-L-U-B. Okay. Or maybe I just show the uh, QR code. Yeah. Oh, okay, we gotta move fast. All right, so let's go. Okay, one question. Oh, actually, we only have one M40 to give away today. Tomorrow is the lucky draw. Mm. That's where the other two are in. So that one, you have to participate later, okay? All right, so let's move on. The first question is, 
Very simple. My, my screen? No, no, you have to see it in the group. Yeah. Answer the answer in the comment section of the Facebook group post. Okay. All right. Okay, we have like one minute once I post. Okay, the post is up. One minute starts now. Okay, I'm going to collect all your names and after that, we're going to choose the winner for the M40. Uh, Lionel? Where's Lionel? Ah, do you have the M40 with you? The M40? Yeah, thank you. Yep. Okay, some people are answering already. Okay, time is 5.27. 5.28, we call a stop. Okay, and then we'll do a very fast one. <laughs> Never pay attention. Google <laughs> some googling. <laughs> yeah. I can see some people are like, hey, you answer, I you know, I copy, answer, copy, please. <laughs> hey, Declan, you, you sound what? After conversion rate, is it? <laughs> Not going to say anything. 30 seconds left. Wow, I can hear ting, ting, ting. Hey. Ah, where got Kilong? No, I cannot lah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ramli Burger, no lah. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> oh, Wagyu version lah. Okay, can, can, can. Okay. All right, time's up. All right, that's it. Okay, no more answers. Okay, this is it. Uh, let's show the screen. Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste. Okay, this is gonna take some time, but don't worry, very fast one. So, see, I can prepare. No, 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 that's not. <laughs> I'm just gonna write down your name. Okay, this is gonna be very fair. Okay, so Ray Tan, correct. Declan, sorry, incorrect. Jibril, a lot. <laughs> that is so vague. Okay, Lester. <laughs> Good job, Jibril. <laughs> How many of you guys think we should vote him out of the group? <laughs> uh, Thinker, sorry, try again next time. Yeah, hope you got a chance tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Bennett, this one, like liquid paper, correct or not after that? Rewrite. Yeah, okay, it's okay. I'll take your second answer. Luckily in time, huh? Yong Fing. Okay, so the answer is actually 14,000 lux. Uh, Tanya Faith, thank you for putting 15,000, but wrong. <laughs> Ryan. Okay. What's your answer? The first one? So oh, you put 16? How come I thought 14,000? Oh, 16,000. Hey, hey, thank you. Yeah, oh, I, honesty. <laughs> because of his honesty, he will win a chance to rest at home over the weekend. Okay, so that's it. Huh? Uh, do we have any more people? Kiwi cow? 300. I got refresh, no more. <laughs> okay, so gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we have these following people. Okay, there's no more answers ready. All right. So this is it. Ray, Lester, Jotham, Bennett, Yongping, and Ryan. Please proceed into that room. And then we have Royal Rumble. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so, so we're going to do this, okay? Last man standing or last woman standing. Okay? So, first one to be eliminated is... I'm sorry, Ryan. Where are you, Ryan? Ryan, where are you? Ryan, where are you? Thanks for trying. Remove. All right, next one. Next one. Okay, let's go. We have... Who's this? Yongping. Yongping, you're out. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for trying. <laughs> we'll remember you. Down to the last four. All right? Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Jotham? Jotham? Where are you, Jotham? Jotham? Jotham, where are you? Come on, <laughs> raise your hand, Jotham. Jotham? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> All right, last three. Last three. Okay. All right, here we go. We have Lester, where are you? Thank you for trying. Thank you. All right, can we have the last two potential winners to come to the front? Ray Tan and Bennett. Ray Tan and Bennett. Ray Tan, come, 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 come. Bennett, come. Hey, you won something before, I remember. Oh, this guy. Hey, not, not here. Hey, no, no, no. Here, here, in front here. Uh, yeah, the spoiler is for me only. Okay. Scissor, paper, stone. Face the crowd, face the crowd. All right. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the winner for Miss Singapore. Okay, let's see. Okay, who wants Ray to win? Because he's the ray of light. Who wants Bennett to win? I'm sorry, I can't think of a joke with your name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, if your name is selected, you're going home empty. Oh. All right, so let's go. And the winner is... <gasps> It's his name, lah. <laughs> Ray of Sunshine. Congratulations Ray to Ray for winning the 5 Ray M40. <laughs> are, are you going to continue winning all the lights? <laughs> He's very lucky. Yeah, sometimes luck is like that. Congratulations. Thank you for participating. And to the rest of you guys, I have a good news to share with you guys as well because, all right, we have something very special for you. Thanks to City Music as well as Murano, our distributor for Tune. Where, where, where's Edmund from Murano? There you go. All right, so... We actually have got a special deal for all of you guys today. Everything that you see here is going at 10% off. Scan the QR code if you're keen. Take a look at it. Think about it. The QR code actually will stay until I turn off the PowerPoint slide. No, I'm just kidding. This is going to last for until next year, right? Next year, all right? So a special thank you to Tian, Murano, and especially City Music, the crew behind for helping us with today's stream as well as today's event. Thank you so much. Give them a round of applause. And special shout out to the folks at Chiyun and Chiyun herself for being my wonderful co-host, all right? Go ahead and follow her. She's an amazing videographer and gimbal operator. Um, and she has got a lot of amazing shots that you can, you can find on her Instagram. Your Instagram is what? Instagram.com slash? RegardsZY. R-E-G-A-R-D-S-Z-Y. And my Instagram is... Yeah, just, just join here. Like, you see me there also. Okay, the Chiyun Fan Club. Hope to see you guys there. Thank you so much, everybody. Truly appreciate Thank it. You. you guys are here. Thank you. Ah, yes, the discount will be seen at the checkout page. Okay, so don't worry, you see the price. Hey, why like that? <laughs> then after that, go, go and message you on Instagram. <laughs> Wrong to you. Yeah. Okay, so thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, done. Have a bright future. The light is in your hands, and tune is. Back. Thank you.
And yeah, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about what the audio interface can do. Um, today we're gonna to talk about an audio interface with four channels. Um, so you can plug up to four microphones into it. Um, it has a look back function. So for content creation, this is very helpful, right? Because you can look back your background music. You know, some of you uh, want to include what you're running on your computer into your streams. Um, and as well as we're going to touch on some very basic or some uh, audio concepts like usage of EQs, right? Equalizers, usage of compressors, how you can maximize your sound, right? Uh, and we're going to show you it's just some very simple steps on how you can make yourself sound better. Because at the end of the day, you're creating very good content, but if your audio is not coming through, right? You're not getting the best audio quality through to your audiences, that will affect the user experience, right? So that's where we come in today and we're bringing it to the table. Um, no products to sell, just sharing some knowledge with everybody. Okay, so uh, the... Yes. Yes, sure. I'm just concerned about, so it's like a host and an interviewee. So I'm mm -hmm. just concerned about like getting like kind of the best quality audio, uh, both like output. So when I upload to Spotify and when I upload to like Apple Music, Apple Podcast, right? So I'm just trying to, so along the way, if you can like explain like how this will f fit into like my workflow yeah. as a podcaster for yes. mainly conversational dialogue audio. Like, yeah, that'll be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll talk on some of this. Uh, we'll also talk about a little bit of this concept called headroom, right? Where headroom is actually quite important. Uh, where it gives you um, the ability to have more more depth. You can achieve better clarity in the sound. They're going to show it later when you're going to hear back some playback tracks and all that through the speakers. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, we don't have a lot of slides. Yeah. Today is more like a demo session. All right, so yeah, no, no usual presentation deck. It's more of a hands-on where later you can, if you can have a view of the camera later, you will see what we can do in the system, right? Before you see, uh, you see before us the big six as well as the SSL 12. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah, so we have two products as you can see on the screen right over here. Uh, we have the big six and the SSL 12. I'll be starting first with the SSL 12. So just to give it a quick rundown of what it is, it's essentially a 12 input and 8 output uh, audio interface. So essentially this has four uh, mic preamps, so it, that means you can connect up to four microphones or four instruments. As well as, uh, we, I'm not sure if we can see it here, but at the bottom we have also a, an additional two more uh, instrument uh, plugs, and we have two headphone jacks here. Uh, this is your monitor knob. And you have two headphone control knobs over here, which are meant to control the two headphones. And then uh, we have a couple of buttons here, like a cut, alternate, which means that you can have an alternate set of monitors. So in total, you can have your main speakers, and you can have another set of speakers, which you can switch in between. So usually for, uh, for st studio producers, they usually have, like to have two sets of uh, speakers, so they can differentiate the sound of how it will like. It will sound like in a different uh different environment, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and yeah, uh, we also have a talk mic over here. So this is very useful. So, uh, this talk mic, you can actually use it to speak to your musicians if they're in another room. So, yeah. You, you, don't, you don't even have to um, speak in another room because nowadays your musicians or sometimes um, your fellow guests, they're on headphones. Right? So if you want to talk to them and they're wearing headphones, you can just press the button and talk to them directly. They hear it on the headphones. They don't have to open their headphones and, huh? What are you saying? You know, so simple features like this actually helps, even though you're, you might even be in the same room. Yeah. So, so, for, so for today's demonstration, I'll be just showing how to do a quick stream setup with the SSL 12. So right now, currently, uh, I'm showing the SSL 360 app. This is what you will be using together with the audio interface to control the many things that go on within your interface. So if you come over here and you can see uh, a lot of things that are going on. Yeah. Okay, uh, if I have other SSL interface, right, can I use this thing? Or is this only for uh, the 12? Currently, this is only for the SSL 12. Uh -huh. The SSL 2 and 2 Plus, we 
uh, we don't have it currently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this must buy lah. Okay, this is quite buy. unfortunate, but hopefully SSL will be able to integrate okay. it into the 360 software as well. Okay, thank yep. you. So just to not make things uh, so complicated, I'm not sure if we can see the screen here. Okay, so uh, to anyone who has uh, sat on a mixer before, uh, are you familiar with this? Does this look anything familiar to you guys? I know, Bennett, you're familiar with this. <laughs> yeah. So uh, not to worry, it's not that difficult. <clears throat> so essentially, I will just, uh, just go, down, go through a very quick rundown of uh, what each of these are. Essentially, uh, you read it from top to bottom. So if you see analog one, which is basically input one, from here, you have the phantom power, line level, and high pass filter. As you go down, you have a headphone sense. So HPA is essentially headphone A. And uh, this knob over here controls how much you're sending it to your artist's headphone. So uh, you can essentially control how much of the signal of the microphone you want to send it to any of the musicians from any of the inputs. So you have uh, a lot of control for monitor. Headphone B is also here, same thing. You can also pan the, the sense if you want. So if, you want, if your musician is asking, oh, can I listen to the, to the guitar on the right side of my, of my headphones, you can adjust it accordingly as so. Right? So if you just want to reset it, just press uh, shift click or just manually turn it back to zero. So uh, we also have a line three, four. This is essentially a second pair of outputs which you can send to another location. And I'll show you how I'll be using that for the loopback feature for your stream. Uh, going down, uh, you can relabel this as well. So you can relabel this as uh, mic. Mic one, podcast one. Then you have the panning, which will essentially pan the, the source between left and right of your, speaker, of your headphones as well. Uh, solo and cut and the fader control, okay? Is it too complicated? Anybody have questions? Okay, cool. Uh, and you, you also notice that you have the talkback mic over here. So essentially, this uh, SSL 12 has a talkback mic. I don't know if you can switch to the overhead. Can I get an overhead? Uh, guys? Yeah, so, so if you see over here, right beside the green, this is actually the top back mic over here. So when you're speaking to your artist, make sure to speak directly into this top back mic over here. Okay, let's switch back. So as you can see, if I tap it, you can see the meter going up. Okay, now. So now these are your playback returns. Essentially, playback returns will playback sources from your computer. So that means from your DAW, Google Chrome, whatever, these are music that is going through. And now I will show you how I integrated it with the loopback. So, so, so uh, anybody here has used OBS before? OBS? Okay, yeah, my man. <laughs> okay, so I mean, if you want to be a content uh, streamer, uh, OBS is pretty much everyone's go-to, it's free. So yeah, I mean, for those that Never use OBS before, don't worry. I'll just walk you through it. So uh, in OBS, we essentially created this audio input capture. And from here, you can select from any of the chosen options from the bracketed SSL 12s. But generally, we'll be using loopback because we want to make it very simple as possible. So generally, why I put one of this so is I don't have to do much stuff within the stream itself. I just want to send signal and it will go out straight. So it's very, very simple for you. So all the control will always be here. So if, you, if you're hitting the stream and whatnot, so if I, let's say I bring this down, and you can see all the faders drop here. There's nothing going through, as you can see over here. So it's very simple. There's, there's only one location where you need to control everything, and it's right within the SSL 360 app. So as you can see, as I bring it back up, the signal will go through again. So how did I do this is essentially quite simple. Uh, over here, and I, I'm not sure if you guys can see where my mouse is, uh, it says loopback source over here. So you can choose any of these uh, uh, playback returns, monitor bus, or headphones, 
to be used as the input to send to uh, the streaming service. So uh, to make things simple, I chose line 3-4, which is this one over here. So if I bring this down, as you can see, it's uh, gone already. And it also, it's also reflected in uh, OBS. So I'll just play a bit of a playback. So essentially what you're hearing right now is uh, I'm not going to play this for too long because of the whole stream, because it's from YouTube. <laughs> I'm playing from YouTube. You can actually play sources from YouTube as well into your stream. So for example, if you have mics going through and all this kind of stuff, you can actually blend them all in together into one input to send to OBS. So when you do your own content stream and when you do your own mix, you only have to control it from this place. It's, it's that simple. So yeah. And for content creators, what they usually like to do is they like to record their podcast tracks. So with, as I mentioned in the loopback, you can also use a uh, DAW, such as uh, Pro Tools, or as the one I'm using, Track Lives, to record the entire podcast into your digital audio workstation. So as you can see over here, the signal is also going through. And this is the same loopback signal that I'm taking from uh, SSL 360, which is uh, the loopback source, which is right here. Yes. So essentially, this makes it very streamlined and easy. Okay, uh, just one question. Okay, you want to do inserts, like reverbs, and all this, right? Is it easy? Can we, can we do it using the software? Like, let's, say, say, let's say I want to do an insert on channel one. I want to do reverb or delay or, you know, or vocal distortion, that kind of thing. Uh, can I? Can I uh, generally, you can. Yeah, actually, you can do that, but I, I didn't have it set up yet no, because no, I feel okay. like it would be a bit too complicated, but yes, okay. that is possible. So the one way to do that is essentially uh, take the... It's basically recording it on a door. Mm. You, can, you know, you're on each yeah, channel, you yeah. can put an EQ, a reverb or whatnot. Essentially, you just take the master bus and send it to uh, the loopback. Okay. And then from there, okay. you can send it to OBS and stream. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank so you. essentially, instead of uh, SSL 360 being the complete control of your mixers, it will now be your door. Mm. Yeah. So, but just take note, you have to to mute your inputs so it doesn't double. Uh, okay. It, okay. It, it, it won't double up. You yeah. know what I mean? Because when me, you record on door, you will be hearing. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Because for, for some of the content creators, right, if let's say they're doing basic streams, right, I mean, verb, reverbs, delays, vocal distortion, all this, or whatever not, right, will be important for them. So at least if, if this is an option or a way for them to do that, right, it'll be, it'll be quite useful. Lah. Yeah. Well, yes, I mean, it is possible since we have the, the loopback source available. So that's one way to do it. No, yeah, I think that's that's the beauty about the loopback function. So it allows you to bring things from your computer back into your stream, right? So whether you want to add effects, you know, whether you want to add some background music, you whether add additional things into the stream, the loopback function that wasn't uh, initially available in the interfaces has been updated in the latest software firmware update. So with this, it makes your audio interface a lot more powerful. Yeah. Just a uh, FYI, the SSL 12 is not the only one with our loopback software. No, actually, our older interfaces like the two. You don't mind. I'll just give it a. Uh, yeah. So to carry on from that, basically what uh, Anel is doing now is he has a stream. Yeah. He has a stream that's coming in. Imagine you're streaming yourself. At the same time, what you can do is you can record yourself, right? Because after you do a stream, normally you want to record it. Uh, maybe you want to edit it because there may be certain parts that you are not fully happy with or you want you know, to add certain extra feature or make it nicer before you actually upload it on YouTube. So you can actually can take the same audio source and actually split it into two functions. One where you are doing the live stream or your podcast. At the same time, you can also record it so that you can either archive it for other purposes or you can you know, clean up the audio a little bit or do a little bit more post editing before you actually finally uh, upload it into your YouTube channel or something like that. Yeah. 
So uh, I'm not going to go through the entire uh, 360 software itself because uh, the last time I did it, it took quite a while, like two hours. Because <laughs> uh, especially for people who have never used the software before, then they have zero knowledge about audio. So I'm just generally showing uh, people how to get the sound immediately because there's a lot of things we can talk about here, like digital inputs and all this kind of stuff. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so is, uh, does anybody have questions for the question for uh, SSL 12? There are quite a lot of tutorials um, online, a lot of YouTube uh, videos that both us as a company and a lot of like, independent reviewers have already done as well. So a lot of this information is actually readily available online. Uh, but also feel free to reach out to us if you need uh, any further clarifications or if you have questions, right? Because like what Anna said, we don't want to stay here until uh, 8, you know. So yeah, we want everyone to have a good evening out as well. Okay, so anybody got any further questions before I move on to the big boy over here? If, if you think this is difficult, well, wait till you try this. No, I'm just kidding. It's really simple, I'll show it to you. Okay. Uh, uh, 12 is going for 599, um, including GST, yeah. This one? Uh, this is, I think, just under 4,000. Yes, uh, but it has a lot of functions. Um, so, and to put things in perspective, you know, from a company that's doing five, six digit, to come up with something still very comprehensive, um, you can effectively run a, f a decent sized band. Uh, you can do a live show with just this big boy um, console that you have. We call it the big six, yeah. So there's actually a lot of features packed into this. Um, we're going to show you some of the features. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of playback so that you can hear the difference after we have um, included some of the features. Sorry, just give me a moment. Uh, so in the meantime, while we're setting up, you, you guys can ask us some questions. So maybe I'll talk a little bit about like why why you are so called some people said oh it's quite a big jump from the twelve to the big six in terms of like price and all that. What are you paying for? So what you're seeing from me is like a proper analog uh, mixing console. Um, it has a sixteen by sixteen USB audio interface as well. So what this means is that you can actually take the microphones. Uh, up to 16 channels, uh, four microphones and other lines, yep. And then you can actually send it into your computer to be recorded. So you can do a lot of things. And on top of that, the microphone itself um, is, uh, it has the same circuitry as what you have in the big studios, right? So you have a very good circuitry. Um, you have very good headroom. So what headroom does for you is it allows you to increase your gain. Right, uh, for lack of a better word, it's almost like, like increasing the volume of the, or your sensitivity of your mic so that it can pick up a lot more details without um, introducing noise. Right? So this is what we call having a very low noise floor. So sometimes when you increase again too much, right, past maybe about 3 o'clock, you start to hear a hiss. Right? So that's what we call noise. Right? So that's pick up because of the circuitry. Right? So having a low noise, um, having a good uh, circuitry, you will have very low noise. That means you can increase, technically increase your volume, or very, very loud, and you still will not hear that noise. Yeah, so that's one of the technologies that in a way you are paying for. Yeah. Okay. okay. 
So uh, yeah, so I'm now just gonna talk about the big six. So uh, what was the most surprising thing when I tell people about the big six? This is also actually also an audio interface. Yeah, they look at me as like, really? I thought audio interface is like you know, this size. Like this is what everyone sees. Like, are you like kidding me, man? <laughs> but yes, this is an audio interface as you can see over here. I don't know if you can see this green light. This is actually the USB connection that's certified. So this is a 16 input and 16 output. So this console comes with uh, four of our SSL super analog uh, preamps. Uh, does anybody know much about preamps? Just out of curiosity. No? Okay. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so essentially, this our, our SSL uh, super analog preamps are pretty good. They give very clean gain. So compared to some other preamps, I will not say the brands so as to not, I, I, yeah, I won't say any other brands. <laughs> but compared to ours, we give very, very clean gain. Like, it, it's kind of like, you know, when you tasted Wagyu A5 beef for the first time, you know, it's like it sticks to you. And now anything you eat below that, it's just, it's, it's not it, you know, because you know there's something better. Most people who have tried this, same reaction. So yeah. So just let me just go through a quick overview of the Big Six. So just not to sound as intimidating, it's the same thing as a 12 as you saw in the 360 software. The channel strip essentially goes down like this. So if you want to know which is channel one, channel two, just look at it like this, going all the way down. Following me so far? Okay, good. So at the top of over here, you have your preamp. So this is where you would it's not a correct term to say, quote unquote, control the volume of your microphone. Uh, in the audio world, we say this is how we control the gain input. Yeah. At the bottom, this is called Stereo Q1. Essentially, this is for monitor headphones or monitor mixers. So this is the stuff we will send to the artist so they can hear the, the, the microphone itself. So you have another one below it. So you essentially have two. This is the EQ, so this is the part where a lot of people like to play with. This is essentially based on our uh, EQ uh, E-series. Uh, it's quite famous. I will demonstrate how it will sound like in the AB comparison, and you'll hear it. This is a compressor over here. So anybody know what a compressor does? OK, basically, it controls the signal to not be so dynamic. So what I mean by dynamic is like, just think of a waveform going up and down. You want to control the peak of it, so it's like squishing it, so it'd be more uniform. If that's the correct way to express it. Yeah. Uh, you have your pen, so if you want to turn left, if, you know, you want to turn right, you'll go right. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you have your main fader over here. Cool. All right. So I'm just gonna play, for example, a kick track, and I'll show you how the EQ and the compressor sounds like together. So this is the uh, kick track without uh, any EQ or whatsoever. So this is with the EQ when I add in a bit of a low. So you can see it sounds more puncher, it sounds more nicer. And this is when I add a compressor. So you might be thinking yourself, okay, what kind of difference is that? So once I release both of them, actually notice the the kick sound uh, sounds a lot punchier now right it, it it hits you and then at the same time it doesn't the sound is we call it a fuller a tighter sound all right so that's what the compressor does it prevents it from reaching the point of what we call a distortion yeah so it rounds up the sound very nicely at the same time it increases the the punch effect So in addition to that, we actually also have the g -Bus Com, which is uh, uh, SSL's famous compressor for gluing mixers together. So uh, I'm going to try my best and see how it sounds like. I haven't really tried it. So uh, like, I haven't do a proper mix yet. So, uh, but let's see how it, 
how much the magic can work on it. Okay, that's right. creating something that sounds good, right? Even for, for a, con a console like this, the caveat is it doesn't mean that whatever audio signal I pass through this console is going to sound fantastic or it's going to sound amazing, right? Because if your source is no good or if your signal is not good, it's going to amplify that, right? So, so sometimes good equipment doesn't nece necessitate that your end result is going to be best. It's going to be the best quality, but if it's the best quality of a not so good performance, it's going to accentuate that, right? So, um, even for podcast things like your mic selection, right? Does the mic fit um, your audience, right? Is it the right type of polar pattern that focuses specifically on your audience, right? Because if you're having a two-way podcast, you want the mic to be more like a hypercardioid, so it's directly to the person, but then you have to make sure that you're the guy doesn't keep moving, right? If not, your audio is not going to be a steady stream, all right? And then after that, you can always fix it with a little bit of equipment, a little bit of help with some EQs, with some compression, right? To make the sound sound a bit fuller and all that. So once you have all these in place, um, you are on your way to, you know, getting a much better sound. Yeah, but selection of mic, um, the right type of mic that fits fits the profile of your, your audience or your, the people that you are doing your podcast with. All these are very important. Yeah, so it's always a good, um, good idea to actually try it out for yourself, right? That's why, you know, um, we're here at City Music, you know, they have the gears for you guys to come down um, to have a go at it. You know, you try it, you make sure that it fits your needs and before you make your, your purchase, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. So yeah, I know, I know it's a very quick uh, demonstration because quite frankly, each of these products, it takes quite a while to explain everything and all these kind of nuances because uh, like bus inserts and all this kind of stuff, you can, you can connect to outboard gears and all this kind of stuff so you can send it to the main bus, so on and so forth. So it's more like you guys can come over after the session and we can explain it to you in a much more clearer way. So yeah. Yeah, with that, um, we're still open to questions, but... Uh, do we have any other questions from the floor? Yeah, if not, I think we're good. Yeah, thank you guys. So if you guys want to take a look at the uh, Big 6 and SSL 12, SSL 2, SSL 2 Plus, we have them here, can you come forward, take a look at them. If you have any questions, you can ask Arnel and Malcolm. Right, so thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming down today. Uh, where is our MC? Mr. Mayuni? Okay, uh, have we ended the stream? No. Okay, so I'll just end up the stream. Lah. Okay. So, uh, okay, thank you for today's uh, tech showcase. This is the first part of uh, two tech showcases. We will be having another tech showcase tomorrow here at our space at 701 Sims Drive, LHK Building, unit number 0205. If you would like to come down and join us in our showcase, please head over to www.citymusic.com.sg, uh, register your interest. There will be lucky draw prizes to be given out tomorrow. Until then, thank you guys for watching the stream. Until then, Lionel, aka Smash Up Junkies. 
see you guys tomorrow.